Hello, lovely people, and welcome back to the Distinct and Jovial Podcast. Don't even start, Jerry. You can't start laughing before I've even finished the spiel. I'm laughing in anticipation of what we're covering today. <laughs> um, my, my name is Dom, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-founder, Jerry. Ooh, I've been upgraded. <laughs> Welcome. I think you were upgraded last time. I'm, 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 I was actually, I, I yeah, think I'm to be fair. I'm going to use co-founder going forward. I like it. I think I'm going to keep going up the ladder. Then I'll be the founder. Mm. And then you won't be the co-founder. Or I'll be the founder. You'll be the co-founder. <laughs> and then I'll go up another level. And then I'll, and then you'll just be, I don't know. Do I have to start calling you like VP of co-founding <clears throat> or something like that? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Just, just, just. <laughs> then you'll be my assistant. <laughs> I'll be the creator. I'll be the, the creator, creator, the visionary. <laughs> the creator. I am the creator. <laughs> Nothing else. This is what happens. I'm just going up the scale, up the ladder. I- ironic, based upon the conversation we had in the last podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, in one area of my life, I'm sort of, is, is, you know, is that what, taking it is, easy. Is that what, is that what was, that's what the true driver is. The true driver, why that's you took true, yeah. a few rungs down in your job was because you suddenly take on this more responsibility with this podcast and you needed to I balance. I need to be laser. <laughs> I need to be laser focused. Okay, I'm Don't laser start. focused. I'm keeping my eye on the prize. Don't start. <laughs> Do not start. That's not fair. <laughs> I am so sorry, <laughs> listeners, but you will understand when we get to that section of the podcast yes. what we are chatting yes. about. Uh, we've we've had um, it's been one of those weeks. <laughs> it has. Um, it is the oh, what date is it? Did I put the right date in? I did put 18th. the right date. It is the eighteenth. It's the day after St Patrick's Day. Uh, it is the eighteenth of March, twenty twenty three. A little bit earlier recording this one, but <laughs> that's what happens when I go away for like three weekends in the month. Yeah, I should stop doing that, shouldn't I? Uh, no. <laughs> we're on episode 22. It's incredible. 22. 22. Yeah. And we've got... 22 months we've been doing this. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we've recorded 23 episodes because we have the bonus podcast. I keep forgetting about we that We do the bonus, bonus podcast. It was We yeah. did it on the uh, Will Smith versus Chris Rock. <laughs> yes, I remember which, that now. <laughs> which they had the Oscars... <laughs> Uh, must have been last weekend, uh, and Jimmy Kimmel went absolutely ham about it. <laughs> so good on him. Good, that was good. Uh, I- I'm gonna have to ask about your additional note next to the episode number <laughs> because just because it keeps happening. <laughs> You're on mute edition. Yeah, I, I because it's sort of everything to do with um. The world that we live in now, mm. where we we use Teams and you know other applications, shouldn't have really said Teams. Probably gonna have to bleep that out. No, the Teams Teams is by Microsoft. We've used Teams, Slack, <laughs> Teams, Microsoft. Yeah, Slack. What was the other? What's the other one? Famous one, Zoom. Zoom. Get um, on Zoom. Right. Yeah, and it just keeps happening week in week out, and it just seems that we've been doing this for years now. I say we as in the royal we as in everybody <laughs> royal. worldwide, and people still go. <laughs> You still ask a question and then and then you just sit there waiting and you go, okay. It's almost become the etiquette. Everyone knows about the etiquette now. So you sort of count to about five mm. and that's when it starts to get really awkward. And then you go, if you're talking, you're on mute. And then you have to go through the whole, oh yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize I was on mute. And then you go, oh no, it's okay. And you go, anyway, what I was saying was, so well, you don't have to say that bit because we didn't hear what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to tell us what you were saying before <laughs> you start saying it. So just say it. So, yeah. It's a funny old world. Episode 22, really you're on mute edition. That's what, that's, that's what it's just written on our notes here. <laughs> I'd like to point out that you're on mute, you're on mute is in quotes. <laughs> it has three exclamation <laughs> marks and it's all in caps. And then it's followed by addition. <laughs> also all in caps, <laughs> just for consistency. Exactly. Um, <laughs> the, uh, did you get a little bit excited when you read this document last night, Jerry? Oh, yeah. oh sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> That's not bad. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with it. <laughs> 
I did. I loved it. I, I genuinely cannot wait because this is just this is crazy. This is going to be absolutely crazy. Do, do, we'll we'll then caveat this with the ne- the final bit of our YouTube spiel, which is the views on this podcast are strictly our own and do not represent the company companies that we work for. <laughs> exactly, or anybody else that we represent, which I or anyone else or anything. No, it just. No, this is this is pure tomfoolery from me and Jerry, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. We'll start with. Uh, well, I was going to caveat this podcast with um, we prepared this last night, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> this morning, Dom. Okay. Come on, don't give us so much credit. <laughs> I wasn't awake this morning. Mine was last night. Well, I did actually update some of the notes this morning. Okay. <laughs> so, right. Excellent. <laughs> I, hashtag just saying. Hashtag just saying. Normally, I'm we are both much more prepared, and I normally have a plan. But for some strange reason, this month just disappeared. You're much more prepared usually. <laughs> I just I just do my usual rock up. Go right. What are we talking about? What's going on? Oh yeah, podcast. <laughs> oh, we've got a guest today. That's a surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, didn't realise. <laughs> Where are the notes? I don't know. I'm in full chicken. Let me read them now. <laughs> I'm in full chicken run mode. Operation wing it. <laughs> nice. I don't want to be a party. <laughs> I don't like gravy. <laughs> we can't use that joke for the <laughs> sixth podcast. But we we, <laughs> we will. Can. We can and we will. It there keeps is, giving. There is a sequel coming out this year. Is there? Yeah. Oh, I've got to watch that. I don't know how many years after chicken run that is, though. When did the original wow. chicken run come out? <laughs> this is what I love about our um, our podcast is we just go, oh, I've had a Tangents. Thought. Tangent, tangent, tangent. Have a guess. Um, okay, I'm going to shut that window down <laughs> and not look at it. I reckon... I reckon 90s because it wasn't long after Wallace and Gromit. You reckon 90s? So I th- think 90 97 you're on 98 it's not the 90s 80s it's not the 80s i remember 70s? chicken man coming out and i'm not that old <laughs> 60s no what it's two, 2000s it's really? 2000 2000 yeah it's wow. 2000 yeah that is still 23 years ago jerry <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it's and it's one year after the Matrix. It is. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. The Matrix is ninety nine. Ninety nine. Yeah, we might have to use that on the ma- We may have to have a Matrix scale of mo- for movies, mightn't we? <laughs> is it older on? Yeah. Is it older on? Yes. Than the Matrix. Where is it on the Matrix scale? It is. Younger. Is it BM or AM? <laughs> AM or BM? <laughs> Where was that? That was BM. <laughs> Before the Matrix. <laughs> Before the Matrix. <laughs> oh dear, that is brilliant. But yeah, actually, I don't know how much there was. I didn't look at the date. I just looked at the year. Matrix is June ninety nine. Oh, I've got that right. Yeah, it was the oh, summer. Get in! Was it June? Eleventh yeah, of June ninety nine. So really, in your face. Um, chicken run. <laughs> I am googling here, folks. This is the beauty of recording. <laughs> Oh, it is almost exa- it's ex- to the month. It's a year. It's the thirtieth of June, so it's a year and really twenty nine. Uh, no, nineteen days. And both films were life changing. Both films were life changing. <laughs> uh, one realised our lives were very boring. <laughs> the other one, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one had chickens in it. <laughs> Actually, you could be in the Matrix now with that green screen. Yeah, you should do it. I can. Yeah, I should do I've, it with the whole. When the pandemic first hit, I used to. Um, there was a feature in the uh, in the video conferencing software that we use at work. <laughs> that which I've already mentioned. Yeah. That you're gonna have to bleep out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, do, right. we, do we use Zoom? Do we use Teams? Do we use Slack? Who knows? Uh, I have Who to knows? admit, I've used all three at work. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have all three installed. Um, but on. Uh, I have software that I can put on the green screen anything that I want. Love it. Um, so I used to have like just like kind of a, like a space scene like that, and it was our um, it was actually our HR director. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. And it was it was a really weird item to have to to be known for. Like ignore all of my 
supreme career prowess that I've shown over the last, you know, nine years or whatever <laughs> it's been since I've left university. Ignore all of that. Ignore all of the, the super stuff that I've done, all of the people I've helped, all the code that I've read. No, I had a green screen, so it was all super fancy. Hey, <laughs> I get it. Because the only people, the only reason why people know me at work is because of the quiz. <laughs> true. That's my legacy. <laughs> That'll be your. Oh, he's contributed nothing. He's literally <laughs> contributed <laughs> nothing to this organization, but he did a good quiz. That's a hundred percent. Like that. I mean, that's just proves how fallible humans are. Really, isn't? Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, basically. <laughs> what are your most? I don't apologise for it. No, no, no. No, I, I, I don't apologise at all. And, and, and there's some really good, later on in the podcast, there's some, some interesting bits that I've brought up, which I think are around this. Not, I was about to say more serious topics, but when it's me and you, when can it be a serious topic? <laughs> serious topics. <laughs> Why so serious? serious? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on to the food of the month. I did kind of come up with this one very last minute, but I, I think it's actually when you when you deep it, it's a fascinating British. question. Do different pasta shapes taste different? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think they do. I think they do. If you had to make spaghetti bolognese, okay, that I've just realised what I've said, which is just crazy. <laughs> but if you made a if you made a bolognese sauce, yeah, and you served it. On spaghetti versus um, well, the pasta tubes. What are they called? Penne. Penne, yeah. Right? It's, it's a different... It would taste different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. Right? The pa a pasta's made from the same thing. You've got the same sauce. But it would taste different. It would taste yeah. different. And yeah. interestingly, I reckon there's probably someone someone on the internet that is going to go, well, actually, each pasta shape is made differently <laughs> and has different ingredients. It, it puts a bit more oil and uses a different because all type keyboard, of flour. Because all and... keyboard warriors have, you know, kind of that accent. Actually, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, sorry. <laughs> That's about 80% of the world's population, isn't it? It's 100% of keyboard warriors, I'm not sure, which are yeah. about like... Uh, about 80%. Uh, no, I'll, I'll be fair. It's probably about 20%, but those 20% believe that they're entitled to have the most amount of opinions above the other 80%. Ah, I got it. See, it's got always... It. There's democracy in action. It's the vocal, <laughs> yeah, it's the vocal minority that ruin, nice. ruin most things for the for the quiet majority but yes nice okay well i mean that was like the simplest food of the month <laughs> do pasta shapes taste different well i and you agree as well don't you i mean it's yeah actually it's really frustrating because at the moment i can't get fusely which is the twirly ones i can only get penne all right in asda in whole wheat why can't you just why can't you just get the penne and then twist it yourself <laughs> well no, each individual one i'm just gonna twist yeah. it just twist it twist it twist it like it's like a dishcloth type thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> um well which is frustrating okay. because i prefer fusely with with pesto rather than, i do like fusely rather than penne. and fusely is very good for things like pesto and things because yeah. it traps all of the, <laughs> yeah. the pesto sauce in the grooves and this is the thing that I don't like about <laughs> penne. Like, you know, if, if you get spaghetti, you can go and it goes like that. And you can kind of, yeah. you know, if you've got it a little bit out, you can kind of half kind of suck it in a little bit. With penne, you can't because it's hollow. You just kind of go and nothing moves. It just doesn't, <laughs> just doesn't move. And it, it drives me balmy. I don't know what it is. It's just supposed to be the way I eat pasta. But it, yeah, it drives me nuts. Are you hating on the penne? I am hating. Like out of all the pasta shapes, I think penne is probably the worst. Really, it's a bit harsh. I think it is. Well, I mean, can, really? can you think of a pasta shape that is worse than penne? Yeah, the bow ties. Oh, actually, no. You, I agree with you on that. That's true. <laughs> That's what probably... is that all about? <laughs> what is the <laughs> what are they called? Uh, what What is the pasta? Uh, oh God, <laughs> farfel, f a r f a l l e. Oh no, f a r f a. L L E L L E double L E oh, for goodness sake for for Farley for Farley for Farley I'm I'm 
I'm doing the that bit at the end to try and make it sound Italian. I've well, probably got it, it completely wrong. It means butterfly. It is if you translate it. It. it, it oh, butterfly. It okay. Translates to butterfly in. Um, uh, it's a completely pointless pasta shape. What you go to all that trouble of making that for what? For farley. For farley. Yeah, for farley. I've just got it. Google Translate to tell me what it is. There you go. But yeah, it translates to butterfly. Absolutely pointless. <laughs> pointless. Seriously, just pointless. Yeah, it's it's all it's all style over substance with that, <laughs> isn't it? Let's face it. Yeah, and also like pasta's quite <laughs> forgiving because sometimes if you overcook it, it's okay. But with um, with that Penny. with with the farfalle, that will that won't be forgiving. That will, that goes a weird shape, and the bow ties go out all the shape. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why does it have to be that shape? I don't know. Who? What? Like, yeah, that's like who designed pasta? Shapes? Who designed it? Yeah, what? What the hell? How what are pasta hell, shapes man? designed? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure that I know. <clears throat> the patents behind pasta shapes. Oh, here we go. That actually like. There's actually patents for pasta shapes. You're joking. <laughs> oh, I like the ones which are... Do you know what? Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna call myself out Ooh. on this, right? Because there's a type of pasta which, again... Oh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. Conchili? Conchigli. We're not Italian. Which is the clearly. shell. I don't know, I know. Yes. It's Conchigli. I yeah. don't know. I'm going to have to just express myself using my hands. Conchigli, which is the shell. You need to do that. And they're pretty cool. You need to do that. <laughs> That's... They're pretty cool. That's hey, the... stop busting my balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a shell. No, they're, br- they're brilliant because they also trap a lot of pesto sauce. Oh, we usually have them with... Um... Like a, a cr- more of a creamy sauce, yeah, or a creamy sauce, and, then, and, and the whole shell yeah. fills up, mm, doesn't it, with and, the sauce? And then you have it with bacon oh, and peas. Lovely. Mm. <sighs> Wonderful, love um, it. Everything. So, you know, it's a shape. Somebody's gone to the trouble of coming up with it, but I think that's genius. Yeah, evidently there must have been. There must be something. <laughs> I'm sure some. I I can hear the rage from all of my. Well, <laughs> from Hooper and Laura, both who are very, very proficient cooks, chefs, whatever the words, I can hear them. Actually, Hooper, on your Instagram channel, I want you to do a video. I'm calling you out. I'm ex- before you, calling you before out. you come on our podcast in a couple of months' time. I am calling you out. I want a video of you explaining the different pasta shapes, why they are yeah. used. I'm calling you out. <laughs> yeah, I call. <laughs> Yeah, because look, there's one, there's a penne and there's a ziti. <laughs> I'm not sure how Which much more I want is... to continue on this conversation because I'm going to get absolutely well, roasted by everybody. <laughs> look, there's rigatoni, which is not that far from penne, which is no. not that different to ziti, which is not that different to... I mean, there's like fusilli, which is similar to a gemelli. <laughs> there's also ditalini, which is similar to a penne... Similar to ziti, similar to rigatoni. So you've got different sized tubes. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's a definite. What that's what she said. <laughs> this is what I love about this podcast as well is that we we had that one question go. Oh, well, that was easy, and then about three hours later, <laughs> we're going. Oh my god, look at this pasta shape. It's like a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Stegosauresi. <laughs> No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, right, okay, how much further into this podcast? How many more countries do we need to piss off? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, sorry. No, I, I must admit, I love Italian food. I think it's, yeah, it's the, one of the best. I think I don't got anything, nothing wrong with it. It's Italians. And I love the Italians, actually. I do love the Italians. Well, they've invented a lot of great food. They have. Um, On the additional notes, I've put, like, are there other things that taste different that shouldn't? And the one I'm going to bring up before I've seen yours, because 
I can see a bit more of a difference with yours, but mine is really important. I think it's a really clear <laughs> distinction. It's the most important thing. Okay. How do you cut your bread for a sandwich? Mm. You know what? That's You're absolutely right. So, not diagonally. Oh, no, I'm a diagonal. I'm hanging up. <laughs> I can't. Are you Carry a heathen on. that cuts it lengthways? <laughs> uh, no, I cut it. I cut it widthways. Widthways, yeah. See, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't. Well, you, you know. So you you've got the. You should really do it lengthways, actually. So you've got because the, then you've got the top of the bread symmetrical. like that. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. then I and tend you to cut it that way. So if the top of the I bread, cut it that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is what most people. I don't think I've ever met anybody that cuts it that way. <laughs> no, but that would be the better way to do it In because theory, then you're getting yeah. the same experience, aren't you? Yes, that's because the top of the bread tastes better than the bottom of the bread. Yeah, yeah, that that's a given yeah. fact, right? <laughs> yeah, that is a given fact, and I completely agree with you. <laughs> and in fact. There are certain things. So, so when I went to, I know, I know you you didn't have a great experience with regards to the food when you're out there. But when I went to Florida, the <laughs> food was amazing, right? And <clears throat> I had sirloin tips. Sirloin tips. Sirloin tips. Interesting. Yeah. So just a tip of the just sirloin steak, <laughs> but like, there was hundreds of them. Just the so tip. good. <laughs> just the tip. They were amazing. Oh, so, so I think it's yeah. Because if if I was to do crust of a crustless sandwich, mm. I'd keep the top. I would I would cut the bottom of the crust. That breaks my head off. brain a little bit. <laughs> you would have you'd have to do you'd have to kind of do some bread surgery with it. Mm. So you kind of so like, like a, cut it like a bit like that at yeah, the top. So you just yeah, the top bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. You'd have to do a very. A very slight diagonal <laughs> up from the bottom bit and then just cut straight forward, just cut the bottom crust off. And then you've got your perfect sandwich. And then you've got your perfect sandwich, really. Then you've got your perfect sandwich, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. See, I love kid sandwiches when I go to kids' parties because they always do the crustless sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. They, They're and, the best. And they get them in like little kind of like oh, almost I like love it. rectangles. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I could eat hundreds of those. And gorge on crisps. <laughs> <laughs> like hula hoops on each finger. And yes. Thumb. Like, who's yeah, a kid here? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so do not. Hula hoops, party rings. Party rings. Oh. Right? Now we're this on, like, great stuff. <laughs> now we're on, like, pure MSG 1990s kid parties. Love it. <laughs> yeah. 90, the 1980s cult. They want their MSG back. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely the way to do it. Oh my god! Oh, I like that though. I, that that's a that's a killer question. I like yeah, that. Which way do you cut your bread? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I will I will hold my hands up. I'm a di- I, I like mine diagonal. I like the diagonal ones. Like I said, I'm gonna have to hang. But up. you don't eat it sorry. like this. You don't eat because the reason being is because it's easy to eat because then you can eat the corners rather than kind of shoving your face in. And if you've got like a jam sandwich, it just doesn't. Yeah, but it's awkward. It's just awkward. And in fact, those first bites that you take, actually, you're sacrificing the experience. So you're savoring your good, ex- you're saving the good experience for later. Yes. <laughs> so you're having to eat a lot more crust. Yeah, but why? I do that with every meal. Like if I've got a... Well, you save the best bits for Yeah, exactly. If I've got like, un- unless it's something <laughs> that doesn't taste as nice when it's cold and it's a cooked <laughs> meal. But I always try and finish with... Like, if I'm having, like, I don't know, steak and chips, I will always finish with the steak, because that's the nicer bit. Well, uh, steak, and, uh, steak and chips is a bit of a misnomer, actually. I'm going to ignore that one, because sometimes you want the chips to wipe up the, the steak fat afterwards. Yeah. I couldn't... Yeah, so, <clears throat> so Rachel used to do that, mm. which, which always freaked me out. So you'd <laughs> give her, for example, steak, chips, peas, and, I don't know, let's say mushroom, whatever... She'd eat all of the mushrooms first. Yes. <laughs> then all of the peas. Yes. Then all of the chips. <laughs> and then the steak. Yeah. And I'll be going, why do you have to eat everything individually? <laughs> she's a, she's the a, whole point of all of this. She's a cereal is that, eater, not a parallel eater. She, she, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've never understood. I always say to her, just 
You've got combo of flavors. Combine the flavors, but she never does it. No, I, I get. I get that. Like I will finish. I will. I. I will eat things together, but I will eat. I will make sure the peas finish first. So, then the steak, and then I'll use the chips to wipe up whatever's left. Wait one second. So, <laughs> if somebody was to give you a lasagna, what would you do? Would you just like no, 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 fish no. out all of the meat from no, no, between no, no. Lasagna, the layers? Lasagna <laughs> is a complete meal, right? Lasagna is a complete meal. Now, I, so here's my challenge for you. <laughs> right, next time you have a lasagna, <laughs> eat all of the cream, cream sauce, and the cheese topping first. Then, then spoon out all of the meat from between the pasta layers. <laughs> then just eat the pasta. No. <laughs> oh, go on. No, that would be so you know difficult. You <laughs> that would be like getting a trifle and eating like the custard off top, and then the jelly, yes. and then or like pulling out the the um the sponge fingers from it. <laughs> yes, I love it. So you don't just like sink your spoon in. You you just go layer by layer, just <laughs> shave it off. Oh, you go cream. Oh, feeling a bit icky. I've had too much cream. And then just custard. full on custard, <laughs> then whatever fruit layer and jelly. Oh no! Anyway. <laughs> and I was just looking at the notes now. I just read your chocolate one that was on the one above. Yeah. Have you? I can. I can actually prove an example. Have? Did you ever? Were you ever around when um, Heinz did their green tomato ketchup? Yes. Where they they just put food colouring in tomato ketchup to make it green. Yes. I couldn't eat it. It's something in well, my brain just went, they, they don't match. The taste, yeah, it does trigger. Yeah. The taste and the visuals just don't match that I couldn't eat it. It made me feel very yeah. sick. Yeah, it does. It does trigger. So the other thing as well, if food is blue, especially if it's like a bright blue. Yeah. Your, your brain basically says... Well, hang about. I don't really want to eat this. I can't think of a blue food that you eat normally. Blueberry? Yeah, but they're, that's they're, not they're really so blue, dark. They're so dark, aren't they? No, I know. I, yeah, but that's what I mean. So you don't really get a food that's bright blue, do you? It doesn't... It's not something that really commonly occurs in nature. So it, things which are red Other and green... <laughs> and, well, <laughs> you can eat the sky if you want. <laughs> It's not very appetizing because your brain's telling you. Not, your brain's not saying to you, by the way, what are you doing? This is sky. Why are you just like <laughs> eating the air? Um, your brain's saying, um, actually, you shouldn't be doing that because it's blue. <laughs> yeah. I've got visions of you in the park, just jumping up as high as you can, going. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> what are you doing? Eating the sky. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear. Well, the sky is not blue at the moment. It's hammering down with rain, but that's another matter. Oh, um, don't even go there. Then you like so. You're saying different shades of chocolate would taste different, even though they were the same. Yeah, I've always wondered this. Yeah, so if you had, <clears throat> if you had, I'm going to use the example, mm. like Smarties, but you didn't put any flavoring in them so if every single smarty was a, is a smarty kind of chocolate was ex, it was all exactly the same but one was orange would it taste different to the one that's just like standard chocolate brown mm. or one that was green would it taste like slightly minty in your would your brain sort of go oh green so that's got to be mint this or, is, this or is orange. Almost, this is almost like flavor. an experiment that we need to do. Like we need to get I, a bunch of foods and just blend them with food coloring and see if they taste different. I think you're right. And food what, coloring. Look, what if somebody was to say to you, what if somebody was to put the chocolates in front of you and then say, by the way, that that does have orange in it. Well, I know that Laura would be disgusted because she doesn't like orange. Strange, strange woman. Um, but can you imagine if you if you if you then eat that and go, well, would your brain just then trick you into thinking, oh well, this person's just told me that that's got orange in it. Mm. It's orange it's, coloured. It's like though you see them on YouTube. Excuse me, people ha like they blindfold themselves, like they'll they'll hide the bottles. So you've just got a bunch bunch of straws, and it'd be like one will have Coke, one will have Sprite, one will have Tango, and it'd be like, can you tell the difference? And most people can because orange has got quite a distinct flavour, and you know Coke is very unique, and Sprite, you know, they're all they're very different. You're effectively lemonade, orangeade, and cocaine. 
whatever Coke is. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is escalated. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but then the, the, what, the other one that they then do is, can you tell the difference between like Coke Zero, Coke Normal, Full Fat Coke, and... Ooh, that would be... And then, yeah. and then Pepsi and like Pepsi Max. Can you tell the difference between those four? That's when things get a little bit tricky. I would love to try that. Well, yeah, maybe it's you know it's something you can I, I think you do. could tell the difference. I think you could tell the difference between the full fat and the diet. Yes, but I think you'd be hard pressed then if somebody was to say, and and there is a difference in flavour. Mm-hmm. But you'd be hard pressed, for example, to tell the difference between a Coke Zero and a Diet Coke. I think. Yes, yes, because sugar has taste. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just, I, sorry, I've just got visions of you just like taking sips of these different drinks and then doing like two lines of coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different. The size of my nose. <laughs> I, need, I need about six. Don't you start. <laughs> Don't you start. I'm going to highlight it. It's going to be like big warning signs every time. Every time I pick up any self deprecation, it's going to be like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Did we have that conversation before I did the YouTube intro, or did we have that conversation after? Before <laughs> it was before, was it? So uh, yeah, before <laughs> for context, <laughs> I was uh, I'd made a self-deprecating joke about one of our later bits, and then I was talking about I said, "Oh, Jerry's very blurry because internet isn't quite keep up," and I said, "Oh, if I take my glasses off, Jerry's actually more in focus." <laughs> That's how bad my eyesight is. What's ironic is you actually are. <laughs> um, that's not right <laughs> I don't know uh, and then I was explaining that, that, that I found a video that had different negative point levels uh, negative values for what your eyesights are and showed what it would be like to walk around a shopping center um, if you ha- were at that level so they did minus one minus three minus five minus eight so for context I am minus five five point seven five and uh, five point two five of my two eyes um so yeah very very blurry uh but jerry thought i was still discussing about self-deprecating humor and wondered if there was a point scale on what on being negative about yourself was which is why uh, and i was googling it <laughs> listeners i was googling it going what is he people that have like and i was putting in random stuff because how do you look up something like that <laughs> So I actually put something like self-deprecation scale, and things <laughs> came up. Things actually came up. <laughs> like what the fringe? What the fringe? <laughs> what the actual fringe? So I'd like to point out, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, <laughs> others of other persuasion, that myself and Jerry are not like this just for you on the podcast. We are like this all the time. We're all the time. This is just <clears throat> a conversation that me and Jerry are doing with an audience. Genuinely, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's like one of our regular catch-ups. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah, we just have to be careful not to mention certain things, like the company <laughs> we work for, <laughs> which I've done once. You've t- yeah, and I think I got away with it. <laughs> full- no, it was it was full <laughs> Hagrid mode. I should not have said that. I should not have said that. But I'm so impressed. Can I just say though, I'm so impressed with the way you bleeped it. <laughs> it just it honestly it takes professionalism to a whole new level yeah the hardest bit was finding the damn thing and, and the audio because it's two yeah, hours I bet. No, no, two hours and 20 minutes of audio to scrub through that's needle in the haystack stuff that is <laughs> well, i can't even get a magnet or set fire to anything so <laughs> <laughs> oh dear the, the last bit on the food of the month then you had um green versus red apples yeah, for me they're a completely different but experience. Apple apples are apples are tricky because apple there are different types of apples that do taste yeah. very, very different. Like you've got yeah. Granny Smith, which generally is a very similar green to, to this. Can't touch it, can't too far away. Um <laughs> and then you've got a pink lady, which is kind of mm, a lighter shade of that, perhaps. Um and then Gala. Gala, etc. Gala? Yeah. There's loads of other, there's loads of, you know. going to Google it now. Types of apples. <laughs> Just go to every single. <laughs> We've done types of pastas and types of apples. Look at the things that we give you. Yeah, Honestly, Honey Crisp, think... Red, Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, Granny Smith, Gala, Pink Ladies. There's a Paula Red. Love it. You're a Paula Red. Macintosh, Pacific Rose, a Jonathan. 
so I would say on that one that it's less less about the color and more about just the type of apple it is. Although generally the color, a lot of them mention the color that they are in in their type one. Like a pink lady is pink, which is reassuring. Uh, yeah, I'd be well. I mean, <laughs> uh, if if it was a pink lady and it was blue, I'd be pretty blue. <laughs> this goes back to eating the sky, <laughs> and your brain wouldn't your brain wouldn't be able to deal with it. If I saw a blue apple, I would not be able to comprehend it. <laughs> would you eat it? Actually, do you know what? That's a very interesting thing. I've just thought of something very interesting because, so the the, the bit that uh, the science bit that I do know about food is generally it's your smell that determines what you taste. Which is why when you get COVID and you lose your smell sense of smell, everything tastes like cardboard. I don't know why or it's chicken. Ca- I don't know what I don't know why it's cardboard, but just apparently that was the that was the programmatic what, thing that j- they've plugged into the matrix for us. And when you lose your sense of smell, it tastes like yeah. cardboard. <laughs> well, genuinely, is that what they're saying? It just tastes like well, officially. It, 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 well, you suppose it, you can't it, it, tell. It depends it, on different yeah. people have experienced different things, but the people I've spoken to, they either say everything tastes a bit like nothing, so it just tastes like cardboard and there's no enjoyment, or people say. Some it depends on how it affects your nervous system. Certain things taste suddenly rancid that didn't used to taste rancid before. I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Have you ever eaten cardboard? Let's not answer that question. The um... oh my god, that'd be a yes. <laughs> I was a five-year-old think... child at one point. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, but as an adult, no, not as an adult, no. Okay. <laughs> This looks tasty. <laughs> well, if you drown anything in enough, if enough ketchup, it it tastes good. <laughs> Not so sure about that, but no, I'm pretty sure. We've just been discussing about how color and shape affect also the taste of things potentially. Do color blind people taste things differently because they don't oh, see it dumb. in a different color? Dumb. <laughs> Honestly. You're, you're digging deep. I'm digging deep here. You're digging deep. But then how, maybe, but then how would they know? How this would you tr- know? Well, it depends. Is it someone... Unless you suddenly become colour Yeah, which you can. Can you? Is yes. that yeah, is that yeah. possible, really? Yeah, I think so. I, I think any oh, wow. any ailment that you can, or disability can either be from birth or caused later on. I wouldn't say any. That's probably, that's quite a brig broad generalization i want to say big and broad at the same time and it came out as break so um <laughs> you know crossed wires in the brains but but maybe that's just a thought like and the only way we you, the only way you'd know that is if you found somebody that didn't use that didn't used to be colorblind and is now colorblind and go does stuff that looks a certain color taste different yeah, now taste different now yeah and then there's going to be a load of difficult things. Like, I, so I can hear Laura screaming as a scientist going, yeah, but there's still too many variables such as age and time and place. And mm, that's true. So much so. And she's right. Air pressure. <laughs> no, that's, that's for when you eat in the sky. That's temperature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an image that your reason why you're so good at that. That's what the dogs do. <laughs> <laughs> Larry. It is. <laughs> He's a giant douche. <laughs> I have to give credit, by the way, to South Park. To create, so Matt Matt Stone and Trey Parker for that. <laughs> they came up with giant douche and turd sandwich. <laughs> it's just just genius. It's just genius. You get the you get the 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 rights for applying it to your two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. You oh. saw them yesterday. Yeah, you saw them, right? Yeah. They're just ridiculous. <laughs> Thirty six kilos versus two kilos. Giant douche. Turd sandwich. <laughs> They're both looking at you. <laughs> Turd sandwich. Oh dear. I, 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 then you can get into the really cruel joke. Wait, are you referring to the dogs? Or are you referring to the wife and child? <laughs> Pass. <laughs> I'll get into trouble with that one. <laughs> dogs, obviously. Obs. <laughs> I obviously don't mean it. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. I would like to... I'm going to jump around this uh, thing. I'm going to I actually squirmed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I actually... 
<laughs> I was actually lost for words. I thought I better not say. I thought I better not say anything because otherwise it's going to keep digging. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean it at all. I know you don't. I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> well, I promise that. Oh dear. Um, I'm going to jump around for this because jump I can. around because uh, because we've got idiom in our in our document. We've got idiom investigation next, but I want to do. It's very similar to your your. Um, uh, what should we call it? Your BS bingo. <laughs> right? Because actually the idioms that I've chosen are ones that I've heard in your BS bingo. <laughs> oh, hang about. Wait one second. Uh, have we got a repetition? No. I think we might. No, been. no, we haven't. No, no, we haven't. I thought we had. Actually, you're right. They are I think quite similar. I think you've just put it in the wrong place, actually. Um. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know where else to put them. I... I didn't know if we can use them or not. Nah, it's good. It's good. They should be here. Ta-da! Here you go. Look at that. So, <clears throat> our idiom investigation today is going to be, because <laughs> it's come up a lot this week, is people that have the ability to say a lot and not say anything at all with some of the phrases that we get in the corporate world. These are great. These are absolutely great. It's a talent. Oh, it is a talent. Oh, I could just, I'm just cringing after this week with some of the stuff that's been going. <laughs> You'll have to start with your favourite one on that list, Jerry. My favourite one? Oh, where where would I start? <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to start. What's interesting, the first like, the first four lines, taking a nice scenic trip on the boulevard of BS, <laughs> crushed dreams on the highway of hopelessness, broken down on the hard shoulder of... <laughs> right? That That could be a Green Day song. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Could be the could be the next album. <laughs> Any of I came up. Be. Uh, it could be. I came up with those because I just wanted to set the scene. <laughs> Taking a nice scenic trip on the boulevard of BS. Crush dreams on a highway of hopelessness. Or they could be meatloaf song titles. It could be. Yeah. I prefer uh, Green Day. I think it would be more likely Green Day. I think Green Day. <laughs> 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 sometimes I wonder if this I, 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 I sometimes I wonder if I did something wrong in a previous life to just be tortured like this. <laughs> you asked for this. I you I did. I did. I did. Um so the first idiom that you've written down is let oh god, I hate this one so much. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I wanted to see cringe. Let's touch base offline. What does that yeah. even like? Like, why? Right? Well, I actually know where this comes from, right? <laughs> but I don't understand how it applies to, like, to the situation. Because why would you say, "I'll speak to you after the call"? <laughs> exactly. I'll speak to you later on about this. Let's have a conversation with just us two. <laughs> let's have a conversation just us two yeah right. it doesn't sound as good as in hey let's let's touch base offline well the thing right the thing right i, I have many <laughs> right i have many issues with this this <laughs> sodding phrase right for starters the touch base bit comes from baseball right and you need to touch base to to kind of start scoring oh, points at least that's yeah, how that's okay. how baseball works right so I, how That's does like, that apply? Yeah, but how does that apply to we need to catch up? How does touching base? Reco- In fact, let's touch base. To me, sounds like something completely wrong. The whoa, whoa, <laughs> exactly. Let's keep it clean. Let's, let's keep, keep it, it clean. Keep it cleanish. But that's what my mind instantly goes. What are we touching here, people? <laughs> right? And you stay away from my base. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then the offline bit, what's ridiculous is 99% of those conversations <laughs> still happen online. <laughs> with one that's... Yeah. Yes. You're on a call with like 10 other people and you go, do you know what? Let's, let's touch base offline. So and we, then you go back online. You hang up and then you After that call. <laughs> or, you just, or sometimes you just stay on that call. <laughs> and then are you online slash offline? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Some of the corporate oh, uh, jargons that we come up with, like, like where does it come from? Let's, I should have done the research beforehand, but eh. <laughs> oh, 
Even the description annoys me. Let's touch base is an ex- is an expression used to suge- to bleh. let's touch base is an expression used to suggest to someone that you touch base. That's not a definition. <laughs> that is the exact <laughs> opposite of the definition. Understanding. What does it mean to understand? No, that's not a definition. Oh, that's brilliant. I love I love the fact that they're taking the same words and just rearranging it. Oh. And and they give and they just spit that back at you and say, There you go, that's that's the explanation. Ah oh, dear. And then, you know, it, it there's obviously loads. It it's around like it's specifically <laughs> to say briefly, which makes sense because you only need to touch the base in baseball <laughs> like you need to touch it and then let you can let go. But Anyway, the offline bit can just get in the bin. The whole thing can get in the bin. Oh, yeah. The second one, I don't think I've heard the second one. Circle the wagons. Circle the wagons. I've not heard that one. So apparently it's to gather a group of people together in order to protect them from being attacked. So, for example, reporters tend to circle the wagons whenever the media are attacked for bias. But I've heard it being used in the wrong context, right? Yeah, so that I can imagine. Let's circle the wagons on this, which is the I, same as like, let's uh, square that circle. Yeah, that one's ridiculous. I've heard to I square mean, that what? circle. What? <laughs> Why do you need to square a circle? The circle is a circle. Leave the circle alone. Yeah. I've heard let's circle back around. Yeah, the circle back. That, which is. I've wh- got to try and keep this clean. Which, There's so many things I'm going through my mind right now. Circle back around is definite is probably one of the more acceptable ones. You know, at least you're t- kind of going. Let's just go back to this. Yeah, is it circle back around? Yeah, but why do you have to circle? Why can't you just turn around? Why can't you just do a 180 on it? Or does uh, that mean that you're completely changing? How circle back became the most used and hated work phrase. There are many circle used back. and hated work phrases. That's just one of them. Circle back. Circle back around, idioms. But, but it says to do something again or to start <laughs> again. Uh, honestly, right. So I've just gone to this, like the, the free dictionary. And somebody's, uh, <laughs> somebody's given see also. <laughs> Uh, hang a Yui, which is an Australian phrase. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it my mission in the next month to get that into a conversation. Instead of whenever somebody says, "Let's circle back around," I'm gonna go, "Yeah, let's hang a Yui." <laughs> hang a Yui. I love it. You've got to get that in. <laughs> and I want it on. The, I want it on a session that's recorded, so I want to actually hear it being said. Hang a Yui. <laughs> Hang a Yui. Hang a Yui. Chuck a Yui. <laughs> God. Oh, dear. So it's just... But it's... it's to, to do something again, to start again, to come back to. Why don't we come back to that? Nine times out of ten in a meeting, that's the last thing I want to do is to come back around to something. Exactly. I'm normally like, can we just... This meeting can could have just... been an email. This email could have been a Teams message. This Teams message didn't need to be sent. <laughs> so I just want to circle back to what you were saying before. <laughs> No, I'm moving on. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. This next one, what? Let's run that up the flagpole and see how it loots. so ridiculous. The thing is, it's just so stupid, and I've heard them being used in a serious way in conversations and calls. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> why, I... why say, let's see who likes... Let's see who likes the idea. No. Why use those words when you can say, let's run that up the flagpole? <laughs> honestly, honestly, right, this is really bad, and I might have to bleep <laughs> some of this. But the first thing that came to my mind is, is this just a way to expose who's a Nazi? Are you just going to throw the Nazi flag up and Whoa. see who throws the Hitler salute? First... <laughs> Wait one second, first cocaine? Yeah, I know. I don't right? know where my mind is today on this Saturday. And then base. <laughs> And now Nazi. Oh, You're going to have to bleep all of this. <laughs> I'm going to have to bleep all of it. I'm sorry, Mother. I really am. I really she, am sorry. But this is the kind of 
that I have to put up with at work. <laughs> Let's run that up the flagpole. No, so I've just said something. Do you like that idea, Dom? Yeah. Do you think people will like it? Yes. Uh, it's better to say, <laughs> let's run that up the flagpole. See who, let's see who salutes it. The only time I will ever, I will ever salute in, uh, in at work is whenever somebody goes, "Oh, we've got a major problem." Major problem. <laughs> oh, very good. Let's have let's have a general discussion. General discussion. <laughs> Oh, speaking of the <laughs> speaking of the, <laughs> the giant douche, can you hear him? I can hear Larry. What a giant douche! He hasn't got the memo that I'm doing a podcast. No, what a douche! <laughs> You'll have to go and sort him out. <laughs> Absolutely giant. No, it's okay. I think it's somebody's obviously delivered something. What a douche! <laughs> what a douche! Either that, or he doesn't like. Let's run that up the flagpole and see those salutes. I think I th- actually think that's what I think. This was actually disturbing him. <laughs> It's disturbing me, clearly. <laughs> well, let's circle uh, back. <laughs> right, the next one, reach out and drill down. <laughs> I feel like that those are two separate ones. I've heard them they separately. Are. I've heard them separately. I don't think I've heard them together. No, but you could say, look, I'm going to reach out to you, Dom, and then we can drill down further into this. That, that, no, that, that I have heard. heard. There you go. Uh, this one's probably a little bit more acceptable. A little bit. Really? Ugh. I don't not... really know what the, the, the opposite... The, the, the not... What would you say instead? Well, th- okay, so... I'll I'll call you mm. later and we can talk about this in more detail. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yes. Explore it a bit further. Yeah, okay, I accept that. I accept that one. Reach down, Rather reach than, reach hey, hey, I'll reach out and we'll Reaching out. Reaching out. Touching me. Touching base. <laughs> Snorting coke. <laughs> Sweet Caroline. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, da. <laughs> I think we've truly lost our marbles. We honestly, this, I knew this is, I knew this podcast. Was going to be properly random. This is what the what the fringe. <clears throat> this next one is my most hated, by the way. Uh, I hate it. I physically I hate, no, cringe. I, this one, this one is horrible. I physically cringe when I hear it. Shall we go and boil the ocean? God. Or normally it's don't go and boil the ocean or something like that, isn't it? Oh. No, I don't know. What people say, I think if. if if we're covering too much in a call and then people go, oh, well, we're not trying to boil the ocean here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I've normally, I've normally switched off. If, if, if it was that type of meeting, it's normally our crumbs. And if somebody has Boil to say we're ocean. boiling the ocean, I'd be like, oh, well, have you heard of So I've warning? just got visions. I've just got visions. <laughs> Do you remember you used to be able to get those things you used to put in the cigarette light in the car? That yeah. were like element heaters. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, yeah, so you could heat up your coffee or your tea or whatever in the mm-hmm. car. So I've just got visions of somebody <laughs> driving up to the sea, <laughs> just plugging one of these element the... heaters, plugging it <laughs> in on a really long cable, cable and just then just dunking it. The ocean, right? I'm boiling the ocean. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm boiling the ocean. How long is that going to take? I don't know. But a watched ocean never boils. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Please go away, because the more you look at it, the longer it will take. A no, watched ocean, ocean never, never boils. boils. Oh, no. <laughs> a watched kettle never boils. That's the other one, isn't it? That is the expression. Which is false, because my the kettle will always eventually boil. Yeah, but it just takes a lot longer. If you look at it, it physically adds on. For... Do you think that applies to watching paint dry? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it will dry a lot quicker if you just left it alone. <laughs> don't hassle it. Don't don't make it self conscious. Don't stare at it. Oh, we're gonna get to. It's James. like somebody watching you. It's like somebody watching you when you're typing. Right? It makes it more difficult. So the kettle's trying to do its job. It's trying mm. to boil. Don't look at it. Make it self conscious. <laughs> make it self conscious. Leave, <laughs> Leave me alone. Just let me boil. Don't stare at me. <laughs> it's gonna take longer if you stare at me. The kettle's thinking. If you stare at me, I'm gonna take longer. <laughs> 
That's like knocking on the fridge in case there's salad dressing. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is brilliant. <laughs> I'm gonna do it from now on. <laughs> you're just I can I can see like you're gonna go into the kitchen and you're just gonna knock on the on the on the on the on the fridge door and Chloe's gonna be like, What are you doing? Oh the salad told, the salad dressing. Salad could be dressing. And I <laughs> and I told you that the only thing that could be I live dressing. for it could be salad dressing. The only thing I live for is to annoy them. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep doing this. Oh, can you stop knocking on it? Yeah, but it could be salad dressing. Yeah, it's not funny now. You've done it for the ten thousandth time. I think my, I think, I think the legend that is my mother could attest to it. It never gets old. Her just announcing, yeah, but Jerry thinks I'm a legend because it winds She's my sister up. She is a legend. <laughs> Still, we've already established it. And that title will never go away. There's literally nothing that your mum can do <laughs> that will stop her from being a legend. She has that title for life. It's like, yeah. It's like you get your degree, you've got it for life. Yeah, exactly. Right? No one takes a certificate away from me. Even if they do, it doesn't matter. It's just a piece of paper. You know you've got <laughs> Laminated. <that degree. laughs> Laminated. It doesn't matter. Don't you've got the degree. Exactly. You achieved it. One of the best films, that. <laughs> That, that, that film, um, it's called Daddy Daycare and it's got Eddie Murphy and I forget who the other bloke is. Whenever you, oh, um, is it Adam Sandler? No. No, it's not Adam Sandler. Oh, is it Jeff, Jeff Garland? Yeah, it must be, yeah, it's Jeff Garland. And it's Jeff Garland, I can't. Jeff Garland. Oh, yeah, play. Yes, um, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Generally a comedic comedic actor. Um yeah, and he um <laughs> Eddie Murphy has explained to this other daycare centre um that you know that they're they opening their own and he's like laminated <laughs> and nobody gets it whenever I whenever somebody says something about lamination laminating things and I always go laminated <laughs> No, but that's been in something else as well. I thought of something else. Mm. And I can't remember what it was. Oh, that's dangerous. But I haven't seen Daddy Daycare. But that, that actor that you're talking about, he's brilliant. He's in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. He's yeah, very, yeah, yeah. very funny. That, yeah. I can't remember the last time. It's probably, I probably can't watch it now because I think most of the comedy is um, based upon, it's probably cringe comedy. Yeah. Um, but Eddie Murphy is very funny. Eddie Murphy. Now, you know, we talked about Keanu Reeves not aging. Mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy also doesn't age. This is very true. He does not age at all. I saw him in a film a couple of weekends ago and thought, what the hell? He looks exactly the same as he did back in the 80s. Yeah. How's, how does he manage that? I don't know. He's how. got some proper good skincare routine going on. Yeah, what's his secret? I don't know. Honestly, he looks fantastic. Oh, cool. well, of course he played, obviously he played Donkey in Shrek. Oh my god! When did the he first? He's so funny. He's when so did the... talented. When did oh, and he played Mushu as well in um, Mulan. Okay, whoa! Stop! Hold up! We need to circle back on this. <laughs> we need to circle the wagons on this. <laughs> How old do you think he is? Don't look! Don't look it up. How old do you think he is? Early fifties, fifty-one, fifty-two. Yeah, he looks it, doesn't he? Yeah. Right, he's sixty-one. 61. He's 61. Wow. Look how good he looks, for goodness sake. Wow. He has not aged. He has not aged. There's a photo, there's a picture of him taken, I don't know, at some point last year, and there's a and there's a screenshot of him from coming to America, and he looks exactly the same. What the hell? And he's been... Well, Beverly Hills Cop 2 was 1987. Wow. Wow. Okay, yeah. So it's not even like he's not been acting for a long time, if you know what I mean. I no, think. he was... So the film I watched, by the way, I looked it up, it's called You People. And he looks exactly yeah, which the same. Is... You look at him and just go, oh, yeah, it's Eddie Murphy. He has not aged yeah, at all. Yeah, we sat next to... Um, oh, God, what's what's his name? Uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill, that's it. Every he time I see Jonah Hill, he looks different. Every time I see Jonah Hill in something, he looks completely different. It's interesting. Jonah Hill, I think, has actually done the opposite. He has, he's 
matured like a fine wine because he re- lost a load of weight. Yes. Yeah. Lost a load. Yeah, of he's weight. looking good. He's he is looking good. But but Eddie Murphy is just, it's insane. Yeah. He has not changed. He has not aged. Yeah. Ironic. Incredible. What we were talking about earlier. Uh, <clears throat> right. So, so let's good. not circle back around. Let's just go back to the <laughs> list that we. <laughs> oh yeah, the list. <laughs> this last one, this last one, I think I actually, I've got somewhere because I'd never heard it until somebody I'm... used it and expected me to know what it was. Yeah, well, how have you never heard this? I, every, this so, everybody uses it all the time. It's low-hanging fruit. I don't like it. I'm not saying I like no, it. No, but, but I've, I've heard it so many times. I'm surprised no, you haven't I, heard it before. No, I heard it for the first time. Uh, must have been a couple of months ago now. And I was like, what does that mean? And what yeah. annoys what annoyed me about it is because is the explanation of it was shorter than than low hanging fruit. <laughs> it was like easiest thing, easiest thing. Just yeah, exactly. say the easiest thing. So the low hanging fruit in that case, ironically, would be to say the easiest thing. Mm, exactly. <laughs> rather than low hanging <laughs> fruit. fruit. Ah. No, but uh, like honestly, so yeah, because uh, somebody must have said, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll make sure we'll do the low hanging fruit." What does that mean? Well, we'll make sure that we'll do the easiest thing. Easiest thing is much clearer. And actually, right, we, we've joked about these, but we work <laughs> with people. Like, the diversity in our culture is so, like, you know, diverse. That's, that was like the let's touch base means let's touch base <laughs> uh, kind of thing. I wasn't, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I was trying to diversification of diversity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Is it like a dream within a dream? I don't know. But but some people won't have heard these phrases. Yeah. Well, ever. Yeah, you're right. I mean, or or would ever use them. Or they don't trans, they won't translate in people's head. No, you wouldn't. Because you never use them in normal day to day (laughs) language. So, So, you know, phrases like it's raining cats and dogs will apps will make absolutely no sense to somebody that's you know that's French or German or you know. No, apparently uh, they have that. Do you know? They well, have French that? French have an equivalent phrase. Do you know what the French equivalent phrase is? No. When it's literally translated. No. It's raining ropes, which on the surface makes more yeah. sense. Yeah, it does. Right, because you know if it's raining really hard, sometimes it is a bit like ow. <laughs> yeah. Hit by, you yeah. know, ropes raining cats and dogs. When you deep that, like what? Well, I'm looking it up now. I mean, because it literally makes no sense at all. It's used to describe particularly heavy rain. It is of unknown etymology and is not necessarily related to the raining animals phenomenon. The phrase with pole cats instead of cats has been used at least since the 17th century. Nobody even knows where it comes from. Yeah, I mean, I've I've got the the phrase might have its roots in Norse mythology, medieval superstitions, the obsolete word uh, catadoop or waterfall, or dead animals in the street of Britain being picked up by states by storm waters. Not particularly. Look pleasant. at this! Look at this! Equivalent expressions in other languages. I love it. So. Yeah. In Albanian, f- God is taking a piss. <laughs> raining like a look, French. El ple comment vache coupis. It's raining like a pea cow. I love cow. it. Like a pea yeah. cow. Yeah, but the the other the one that I know of is um El Plu Decor, which is raining ropes. So I like this one, raining nails. Yeah, yeah. Raining enough to drink standing. I like that one. <laughs> Il pleut a bois de boot. We've picked French because both of us have a little bit of French within us. <laughs> oh, no, listen, for, for Samwise, we need to go German here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, It's raining young dogs. That's very specific. <laughs> es yeah. regnet junge Hunter. <laughs> junge Hunter, yeah. Raining light poured from buckets. Es, es schüttet, schüttet wie aus ein, Eimern. Eimern? Eimern? I think so. Raining strings. Okay, that one's not I'm easy. Not es, try that one. es regnet Bindfaden. Beinfaden? Bind, yeah, Beinfaden. I would have said a Beinfaden. Yeah, Beinfaden. As big neck Beinfaden. Something like that. Look at this. Raining strings, raining chair legs. 
Raining chair legs? Where have you got that one? <laughs> yeah, that oh, that's, was... Oh, of course that would be Greek, Greek, wouldn't it? <laughs> Socks, I'm calling you out on that Socks. one. Socks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Mad rain. Yeah. What? Ra- raining she trolls. That's Norwegian. Raining she trolls. Persian is raining jackals. Uh, raining snakes and lizards. That's Portuguese. Yeah, well, that's Brazil, Brazil. Brazilian, Brazilian Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. Axes are falling. falling. It's a bit dark. <laughs> what, that's a bit what dark. The fringe. <laughs> Axes uh, are falling. That sounds like one of those. One of those poor action adventure films that are based yeah. upon blowing up the White House. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with all those called? like second-rate actors that. Yeah, like... yeah. Oh no, I think it's got Gerald Butler in it. Yeah, you're right. It has. That was a very, <laughs> very disappointing film. Oh I have god, to say. what is the fi- um, um? Something has fallen. Uh... Oh, has f- has fallen series. Olympus has fallen. London. Olympus. Has fallen. That's it. Angel has fallen. Axes has fallen. <laughs> I love this one, by the way. Spanish, Colombia, raining husbands. <laughs> well, that's just one step away from the song It's what? Raining Men, then, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and say that in Colombia. Oh, Están iluviendo maridos. <laughs> <laughs> Point, the one is Spanish, Argentina, pointing down turds are falling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> You're right there. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I had to get to mute. You're on mute. <laughs> We're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> which is uh, oh which is probably a God. good thing. Oh Jerry, I'm gonna die. <laughs> In Thai it's raining without opening its eyes and ears. That just reminds me of like, so the, one of the podcasts that I base a lot of the elements on, uh, or that I did was, um, I used to, it was the, uh, was a podcast called the WTF one podcast and they've now moved to the, the P one podcast. Okay. <laughs> it's a formula one podcast. So that's something I'm very passionate about. Um, we, yeah, we have to wrap this up before five o'clock cause that's the F one, the F one qualifies. <laughs> <laughs> five o'clock. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah. We know we well, do. This is us gonna... two. Yeah, I know. I've got to pop into town. I've got I've got stuff to do. How long have we been on? Oh, four hours. In <laughs> but um, on one of that, they're doing a live live podcast. Can you imagine doing a live podcast? So basically, no. they, they've hired out Leicester Square and they're doing a live podcast. Leicester Square. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Sorry. I can't remember the advert for it. Is you're going to be hearing us in your eye holes and your ear holes, <laughs> right? And after he's finished recording it, evidently they've kept the outtakes in because the, the other co-founder is laughing, going, eye hole, hearing you in your, uh, in your eye holes. Eye holes. We've got to keep that in. <laughs> what the hell? What? And I was like, your what? eyes. <laughs> it, I just. What? They're just there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't, you don't need like, they're not holes for time <laughs> to take in all of the vision. <laughs> Like you do with you're sound. De- you're deeping it, Jerry. You're deeping oh, it. Jeez, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Eye holes. Shall we try and get this podcast back on track? Uh, yeah, go for it. Honestly, like the <laughs> this the, the those those things make me want to cry. <laughs> I hope I'm gonna play like I'm gonna play BS Bingo so one of these days. I'm just gonna. You should off. do it. You should do it. Can you imagine this? Like halfway through a call, you just go Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Go, what's his name? Oh, I honestly don't know where to go with our podcast at the moment. I'm like, which one? Where, where do you want to go? Uh, I've got so much cool stuff that we we. I know. I, so, I so I think I think save the idioms then. We'll save the other idioms then. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think they're brilliant. By the way, <laughs> well, one of my favourite ones after you explained it, which I don't, I don't want to ruin it for listeners, but that last one in your list, I oh, love that. that. that I one. love that. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you changing yeah. the light bulb? I am doing it. <laughs> I honestly, when when you, I think it's genius. I absolutely love it. I was explaining it to somebody the other day. <laughs> um, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, okay, well, look, you know, we're not trying to boil the ocean here, so <laughs> let's go down to 
So conspiracy theory, by the way. Let's do the conspiracy theory. Yeah, should we do that? Because yeah, I, I just think, Dom, you've just pulled off an absolute masterstroke. This, this, this could be the fifty minutes left of this podcast, by the way, and we could yeah. not get to anything else. But I think it's really, it's a, it's a really good little conspiracy theory. And the conspiracy theory is the Simpsons have been predicting the future and will continue to predict the future. So Matt Groening is from the future and he is predicting events. Whoa. He, he has been. It's so incredible. The article that I've linked is the 30 times The Simpsons has predicted the future. Now, the first one is the Trump presidency. Uh, oh. Episode 11, season 17. Um, then they predict, they've correctly predicted Super Bowls. Um, yeah, I mean, cor- what? Successfully correct. Uh, correctly predicted that Disney would buy 20th Century Fox, which is why The Simpsons is now on Disney+. Plus. Uh, they predicted smartwatches. They predicted autocorrect. Um, there's something about stealing cooking, ga- cooking grease for cash. Not sure about that one. Uh, they uh, predicted the FIFA corruption scandal and the World Cup results. Um, uh, then uh, the Beatles send in blatant fan mail. <clears throat> um, Siegfried and Roy Tiger attack. Um, so they basically predicted. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That and that actually happened. Predicted video chats. Oh, what are we doing now? Etc. Uh, Etc. Et because oh, it's giving the. Is it giving the episodes? No. Go back to the episode of Handy features one of the more vital components of the 2010s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, predicted US wins gold in curling. Predicted uh, an average Joe goes in space. Predicted Lady Gaga's Super Bowl performance. That's an interesting. Um, predicted faulty voter machines. Covering at Michelangelo's David. Mutant tomato. Oh, mutant tomatoes. Oh, they made tomaco, didn't they? Tomaco. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know whether I would say that Tamako well, is probably not a prediction. Probably someone took the idea from the Simpsons. Today. Yeah, pro- probably. That one's a little bit more. That one's a little bit of that. Uh, the Higgs, Higgs boson particle, uh, Ebola outbreak, uh, the shard. Oh right! So they oh. predicted in season eight six that the shard would exist, and by twenty twelve, the shard had, had exist. Um. <laughs> there's loads there's loads I'm not sure about the three eyed fish putting horse meat in food oh yeah but they've been doing that for a long time though haven't they yeah yeah they have uh, what else are there yeah loads baby translator loads <clears throat> um, so yeah um, they've done there's 30 or <laughs> Don't, yeah, I like this one donut shaped universe Oh, that's true. Which apparently there is a theory, yeah. Mm, that one is donut uh, shaped. There's a theory that the universe is donut shaped. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, like when when people say, if somebody just said to you, "The Simpsons predicts um, predicts the future," you'd be like, "Don't be ridiculous. That's a that's a conspiracy theory. That's just a conspiracy theory." But then you actually go through the number of times that they have actually predicted yeah. something, and you're suddenly like, uh, "Well, actually, they've done it quite a lot." <laughs> Like, like, so they got so many bits and pieces right. It's now a case of, right, at what point do you kind of say they are predicting the future? And at what point do you just go, this is a ridiculous rumour? Well, I, I know there are a couple of things. The, the one that, that freaked me out was the, um, the whole thing around Trump. Trump's election campaign mm. with him coming down the the, the uh, shopping centre escalator and things and and he literally did exactly the same thing didn't he when he announced his that he's going to be running for presidency mm-hmm. um, and and they literally got it down to I mean they compared the the screenshots from the episode with with the actual video footage yeah here we go. Oh. And Homer's standing behind Trump. Yeah, look at that. And then you see the actual footage of him. What? It's very strange, isn't it? It's very... 15 years apart. 15 years. And also when he's standing at the podium. Yeah. 
with the two flags and oh, I, this is it's too much so i was just i was just looking it's at like incredible. what other what what other things could happen like so there's a lot of one uh there's like AI. what stuff that hasn't happened yet yeah stuff that, the, that they've the sim- pre- ah. that they've predicted and that and could happen so right things like a, a mars colony the robot uprising uh president ivanka oh okay yeah um president i don't like the sound of robot uprising by the way can i just say that that yeah. actually does genuinely send the chill down my spine okay president schwarzenegger yeah, I can see that. Because he's been governor for so many years, hasn't he? Uh, Digital Big Ben. <laughs> I'm not sure that one will ever happen. I think that one. Not, I that don't one. think so. Uh, hover cars. That could be the thing. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Uh, fully talking houses. I, I can see that. Um, an AI, AI medicine. Yeah, I can see that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, one they, they it said that they they don't uh, that they that it's one that hasn't happened yet. But I don't know what the year of this article. This article was twenty twenty, but it says um, cars with sound effects. Well, that already has happened. Electric car, already ha- electric cars now have to have have to have sound effects. They have to make a noise. Yes, and if, they do. And if you've ever had a, an electric car creep up behind you in a car park and it gives a ooh kind of noise. I hate it's that. Oh, I hate that. I almost got run over by one in, in Waitrose car park. <laughs> no, seriously. That just genuinely. says a lot about you going to Waitrose. It was convenient. It happened to be there. Don't shop there regularly. Hashtag just saying. Could be anything. You could take Waitrose, insert other supermarket name brand <laughs> Any supermarket right here brand. sainsbury's tesco's asda morrison's uh, now, aldi, now you're a bit more in my little <laughs> yeah. actually i love aldi hashtag just saying i don't think we've got an aldi near us oh, i love aldi i think we oh no is, i'm just trying to figure out where, where i love all of the stuff that they do which is the branding is pretty much identical to the og okay so for example they do so i, I love um uh i love Oh, I know where it is. Gin and tonic, and I love Fever Tree Tonic, and they do their own version of Fever Tree Tonic, but the cans, everything looks the same. It's all the same colours, same kind of packaging. And at first glance, you go, oh, it's Fever Tree, and then you realise, oh, no, it's not. It's Aldi's own brand. Okay. I don't know how they get away with it, to be honest, but their their stuff is... Aldi is amazing. I'm just trying to figure I out love it. where it is in... Oh, what, I you? know. I, I, yeah, some? I know. I know where it is. It's right in a really awkward place. Um, it's it? it's like on the it's like on the wrong side of a dual carriageway. So you have, to, but it's a dual. Oh, it's a, go! It's a dual carriageway that's thirty miles an hour. So it's like a town centre dual carriageway type thing. So you have <sighs> to go to a certain point and river, kind of come back around. Uh, I hate it when they do that. And then the 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 Lidl is in a similar place on a different part, but it's easier to get to because at least you can get across the dual carriageway. Um, you know, so you mean circle back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sod. Uh, <laughs> I had to get it in there. Yeah, I had to get it in sod. there. <laughs> but yeah, there are, many, there are many kind of scary things with this Simpsons type thing. And I have to admit, I... I've not seen recent episodes to really know how accurate they've been. I I haven't either. I haven't watched The Simpsons for a long time. I watch the odd episode every now and again. I used to watch it religiously. Um, in the 90s and 2000s, I used to watch it all the time. Mm. Um, but, I mean, maybe one for another podcast episode, but that whole thing about the rise of the machines and the rise <laughs> of AI, okay, that really, I find it genuinely, I do genuinely worry about it. Yeah. I mean, like, for me, I'm a bit like, oh, websites that tell you off for using an ad block, I need to go in the bin. Uh, <laughs> we need to do a one oh, Room 101 episode, don't we? Oh, that! what a brilliant idea. <laughs> so pineapple on pizza, that would be <laughs> what my first item that goes into Room 101. But yeah, we should do a Room 101 episode. Genius, Dom. You're just like, you're snapping necks, <laughs> cashing checks. No one's saying I don't come up with a good idea. No, honestly, you, you, it's just like one idea after another after another. You are absolutely on fire. Yeah. 
I'm I'm just looking at the the rating <clears throat> IMDb ratings of by season. I uh, and it's kind of peaks at like season six, season seven. Really? Yeah. So it's like what they've done loads more six seven as in ratings peak six seven and then it goes like this yeah. and it's down at like it's, it, it kind of comes down to here. Okay, so there's plenty of um different bits and pieces. <laughs> I do like The Simpsons. They were groundbreaking. I mean, in terms of humour, mm. in terms of adult. You know, I mean, you think of what, what The Simpsons kind of paved the way forward for. So, um, you know, Family Guy and, and, you know, how many different, you know, Rick and Morty, there are so many different uh, sort of adult animations. Yeah, I can't really think of anything now, that came, nothing came before The Simpsons. Nothing, not before, no, not like not like that. But you've then got, you know... The Simpsons, South Park, Rick and Morty, America, American Park, Dad, yeah. Bob's Burgers, um, <laughs> Bob's Burgers, Bojack Horseman. <laughs> there's loads. Futurama. Those types of things. Those are the. Those have all kind of spun off from the success of The Simpsons. Yeah. And The Simpsons is, I think, it's now the longest running. Yeah, I'm just having a look at something. It says renewed for seasons 35 and 36. Yeah. Wow. Longest running. Yeah, The Simpsons. It's really NCIS really up there. No, yeah. surely not. Really? They've done that many episodes yeah. of NCIS. 1989. Did you say there's someone in your... Oh, I don't know what happened to my voice there, but didn't you say there's someone in your family that loves NCIS? Oh, my family love NCIS. They just love it. 2003 it started. NCIS? Mm. Yeah, well, Simpsons was 1989. No, it wasn't. It was the yeah. 80s. 89. No. Yeah, first episode. Was that in the Tracy, Tracy Ullman show? Oh, don't know. That. Must be. That was on... The first... My God, NCIS. They were on episode 34, uh, season 34. Uh, I don't know if you can see episodes. Whilst you're looking that up, so I just need to ask something here. Mm -hmm. NCIS is it is it like <laughs> um, CSI, where you had like CSI, you had CSI, which is based in Las Vegas, then you had CSI New yeah, York, then, then Miami. CSI Miami, and then yeah, so CSI Yeovil, and <laughs> CSI <laughs> CSI Limington. <laughs> Um, CSI Ealing. <laughs> um, so interestingly, it says it's from 1989, but the first episode didn't come out till the 2nd of September 1990. Maybe they had a pilot that came out in 1989. No, so, so The Simpsons used to be part of the... Tra they had a slot on the Tracy Ullman show. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think that's... So that might have been in 89. Yeah. Oh God! Yeah, look, there's NCIS Hawaii. Yeah, but they didn't NCIS Los Angeles. Yeah, really? Yeah, there is. There is. For goodness sake! So NCIS Yeovil. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. N NCIS Welling Garden City. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't quite roll off the tongue, there, does it? it doesn't does it? <laughs> it doesn't no. quite roll off the tongue. Oh, dear. <laughs> we are terrible. <laughs> We have probably gone off on a tangent. We here. have gone very much off on a tangent. I, I did enjoy like the original, like probably the first like four seasons of stuff. <laughs> Anything that goes over about six seasons to me, I think uh, just uh, like becomes terrible. You think so? Yeah. Like, because if I take NCIS, none of, from 2023, none of the original cast are on it. <laughs> Can I just say, if I if I had a show, if I was producing a show like that, I would get properly granular with it. So I was just <laughs> looking up strange British town names. So you can have like NCIS Little Snoring. Oh, dear. NCIS Shitterton. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to actually look at... All oh, right, there we go. Like, so on... NCIS Crackpot. 
You're a crackpot. NCIS Bonks Hill. <laughs> C- <laughs> you could go like CSI Westwood Ho. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's a complete like it's, it's it basically after a certain amount of seasons, it becomes a um, <laughs> it just becomes basically a, a, a different show. I'm kind of half ignoring you, Jerry, at the moment. I, I know, know you are. I know you're deliberately <laughs> researching all of these different things. Right, here we go. Little snoring. Here we go. Anyway. Here we go. Sorry. Anyway, Simpsons, they're predicting the right. future. What are they going to predict yes. next? No idea. Very scary. Not sure I like it. <laughs> well, well, wait one second. Yeah, we don't know, but there are predictions that they've got. So there are things that they have actually gone and put in episodes. Mm. And that, that I keep going back to the rise of the machines it really bothers me because we're talking about the whole, we're talking about stuff that they got right Yeah. now. I do not want to be in a position where we're recording our, I don't know, 2000th episode. <laughs> And they're like, oh, Dom, actually, uh, there's robots outside the house and they're getting aggressive. I need to go and sort them out. And they're going, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> oh, it does. It really gives, it just gives me the chills. It does. It's, if you think about it, look, really Matrix just, is our favorite movie. It is, right? Yeah, definitely up there, yeah. And th- say no more. Yeah. That's, that's machines. That's AI. Yeah. Turn us into batteries. I watched it on the plane uh, to America. I was like, oh, Did you? I was like, I'm going to watch this. And it's like, my coach was like, have you not seen this? Yeah, I was like, and? Yeah, okay. That's actually really quite upsetting. Yeah, it's upsetting, isn't to it? To even question it, because question, question why opinion. would you question that? You just, the reaction should have been, ah, oh, Dom's watching The Matrix. Yeah, cool. I totally get it. Get it. Yeah. He's, he's seen it 400 times before, but it doesn't matter. He's watching it, it again. still stands to up that. today. It really does, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Yeah, great. Absolutely. We've gone off the Simpsons <laughs> onto the Matrix. No, no. But the Matrix, the Matrix is just... It does. It. It's... Sorry, just... <laughs> the last thing I'm going to say on it, because it, it is just the most amazing film. But you do watch it, even today, and you go, whoa. <laughs> 20 what 24 years later and you you're you're like yeah this yeah it's next level it's 24 years yes 24 (laughs) years yeah exactly it's 24 years Uh, this is a frightening thing somebody says to you oh yeah i was born in 2000 that'd be 23 i know i know somebody did that to me the other day somebody did that the other day like we were um we were at a taekwondo tournament and i am the oldest by I'm the oldest competing by 13 years. No. Yeah, the next person is um, 18. Yeah, that's how old I am. Um, oh, my God. Oh. And I'm like, oh, it just hurts. Yeah, that's, how old, yeah. <laughs> hurts. But that's how old I am. So how old does that make me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, 33 years difference, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, flipping out. <laughs> oh, my God. That's frightening. And what that means, you know, and, and they were, I was like, I was just, we were talking about it and I was like, oh yeah, you know, when you were born, and they're like, well, I was born in 2006. Off. Just what? off. What? 2006? But they're still, that still makes them 17. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, no, I don't like dwelling on this. They're like, oh yeah, I'm just learning how to drive. When were you born? You know, I was expecting like 1994 or something. No, 2006. Just no fuck way. off. <laughs> <laughs> when as soon as they, as soon as you don't hear the 19, that's when it's like, yeah. oh right, whatever, yeah. whatever. 2000 and and <laughs> yeah, and 2000 and nothing, pal. <laughs> don't give me that. Don't give me that rubbish. Gee, yeah, so. <laughs> That's what I have to deal with the squad. What's annoying is they're all significantly better than me, but that's because I'm I've hit my peak and I'm on the my way down because I am I'm getting too old. Um and I'm very well, no. It's not that I'm old. Too old. It's not that I'm old. I've got a lot of miles on the clock. <laughs> I'm a nineteen ninety one model, but I've got a quarter of a million miles on the clock. That's the difference. Think <laughs> think of yeah, but think you're a classic. Think of the low insurance. <laughs> right? And you've aged well. Actually, I did read an article the other day that apparently you can get your car insurance cheaper 
because you can get classic car insurance now for 2003 yeah. cars and <laughs> some 2003 cars you can get a standard fiesta 2003 fiesta and get classic car insurance for it are you serious yes. classic car insurance 2003 because oh, it's 20 so years old it's got, i think it's like classic car insurance can kick in from about 20 years i think it is this is so depressing <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it really hit. Honestly, this is oh, no. This is this is depressing. God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I can hear. I can hear. So Samwise is doing interviews for. Um, they call it interns, but like the equivalent of like our apprentices and stuff like that. So, you know, she's interviewing all these people who are very, very young. And she's just like, oh, my God, what did I do? Was I really like this when I was that age? <laughs> it's so frightening. I know I, that she can will you be imagine, in pain. Can you imagine if you met your 18-year-old self or 16-year-old self? Can you imagine if... if if I met my younger self, I'd I'd punch myself in the face. <laughs> I would punch myself in the face. To be fair, I'd say, "Oh, by the way, temple elbow." I'm just gonna. <laughs> oh, you can have it. <laughs> have it. Have it. Paul John Smith. <laughs> I would. I'd just be like that. Get Paul out of John it. Smith's? Yeah, have it. Yeah, have it. Paul John Smith. <laughs> have it. I love that. Have it. Boots it right out of the, the Queen and Country field. <laughs> genius, absolute genius. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, Actually, that's an episode as well. We could do. I'm gonna have to write these down, Jerry. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to write this down. So, room 101, room 101, <laughs> room 101 and maybe well, not a whole episode, but definitely a theme of. What would be your impressions of meeting your younger self? And what would you say? What would you say? Oh, what God. advice would you give to your younger self? See, look at us here, folks. We, are, I, 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 I always forget <laughs> that we've actually got like an audience here with us when we're doing these. I know, things. we're just like chatting away. <laughs> and you know what we're doing here? You know what we're doing here, don't you? What are we doing? We're boiling the ocean. Oh, we've get covered. out! We've covered a Get lot up. of topics. Yeah. <laughs> An ocean of topics. Do you know what? It's funny. When we first when we first started um this podcast, folks, we would come up with a we had a script and we would go through the whole thing. Um we've come up with a script today. We skipped three sections because we've got to that stage. No, three? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well we've not done we've only done half of idioms. Oh yeah. I've not true. done the interesting facts. And we've still got another Oh yeah, interesting facts. Of course, <laughs> we got four things. We haven't done interesting facts for like the last six podcasts because we keep running. I know we keep running out of time. Well, so for those folks that are like, "Oh, your podcasts are the only problem I have is your podcasts are too long." Trust us, we could go on for longer. We could oh absolutely, my God, we really go, could. We could go on for hours upon hours. So just well, just be. If we were to if we were to cover all of this off, you are going to miss the F one. <laughs> so <laughs> you are. You're going to miss it. So I tell you what. Okay, what are we going to? Should we choose one more thing? Uh, I want to do. Let's do two more things. I want to do the 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 two poignant question, uh, the poignant questions. I want to do the the nicknames because I want to give someone a shout out and I want to hear your opinion on some of these nicknames. And yeah, then, go on then. And then I think we should do the would you rather's. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking hang about because I, I was about to say no. Why are we doing would you rather's? Why don't we do the poignant questions? But that is the, the poignant, poignant questions. questions. Would you rather? The would you rather? Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't yeah. matter if we co- we record for like two hours thirty because we had a ten minute break. Not that necessarily the folks will know that because internet crashed, and I'm probably going to cut that bit out. So fair enough. On the fly things. Right, let's go on to poignant questions. So this go for these are nicknames. Now I have stolen I, I've just written to you like snowplow names for the UK and people names for Australia, right? And but some of these are more than just Australia. But I stole these from a podcast called We Got the Chocolates, which uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to <laughs> one of my work colleagues, Sean. Big cricket fan. This is a massive cricket podcast. He will love it. They're also where I got the try not to laugh section from as well, oh, which I think is brilliant. I think I've seen yeah, some of those, yes. Of these. So yeah. I have some of these nicknames, and I think they follow on really nicely from those, uh, um, whatchamacallit, the 
idioms that people use in office because there are these are probably really good office nicknames to have so okay the first one uh noodles thinks all jobs takes two minutes <laughs> oh i love it I, i've got loads of these uh deck chair always folds under pressure <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> Uh, the way they describe this, so they, they go, there's this one bloke that we know, he's got one leg longer than the other, um, and we simply call him Sniper's Nightmare. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. <laughs> that is so bad. I never said these were PC, they were just funny. Oh my god. Um, we've all, we all know one of these, uh, sensor light only works if someone walks past. <laughs> <laughs> We know a few of them. <laughs> I love it. Um, next one, uh, lantern. Not very bright needs carried. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, which I think is brilliant, because we all know this, uh, a seagull manager flies in, craps everywhere, flies out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And uh, we know I think that's my favourite. I think that's my favourite. We know a few of them, don't we? We (laughs) do. do. I've known many over my whole (laughs) career. That's brilliant. (laughs) We definitely seagull seagull. manager. (laughs) Just here comes the seagull. Oh, look. Actually, you have to be careful. So we have to keep it clean. So you couldn't just like have a manager come onto a call and just completely mess everything up and then dial off the call. And then you go, I think we've just been seagull. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That's my favorite. <laughs> the one I like is sensor light. I know a few sensor, sensor light. light. Is brilliant. Sensor <laughs> light is that's genius, and the lantern as well. <laughs> Not very bright. <laughs> and deck chair. To be fair, the, the, these are all very, very good. <laughs> Noodles. They're very good. Thinks all jobs take Noodles. two minutes. <laughs> I know a few project managers like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So. Yeah, those were the those are the ones that came from this Australian. Po- well, oh, the, the, the seagull manager is one. I, additional ones I found. There's a few additional ones, but those are from seagull. the Australian. We got we got the chocolate, so I've got to give them a shout out. That's and then while I was doing this, I was like, what what ones do we have in UK? We're a little bit more subtle. The UK we like our puns, and the best set of puns that I could find is um, never give the British the opportunity to name things. <laughs> That's how we came right. up with Boaty McBoatface. Right, for example. <laughs> and that that was official, wasn't it? I think so. I think on one of them it was official. Yeah. Um, but the the one that I that I that I creased at was um naming snowplows up in Scotland. Yeah, I I didn't know that you could name a snowplow. The, the, these are here. that was even a thing. So there's things like Gritney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for God's sake. You're a blizzard, Harry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I've got like 12 of these, Jerry. Oh, my God. Um, uh, Cleopatra. They're clutching at stools on that one. <laughs> Hans Nolo. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite one so far. <laughs> Love it. Sleetwood Mac. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, Taylor Drift. Uh, <laughs> Sir Plows a lot. And uh, license, <laughs> license to chill. <laughs> oh, oh, honestly. <laughs> that is genius. Some of these are genius, yeah absolute genius so those are, i just wanted to entertain Taylor you with... Drift. <laughs> Hans snowlow was the one that got me Hans snowlow that's my favorite Hans that is, snow that is no... and there's loads of others i if i did a <laughs> they because they have um they have a website that actually shows where the snow plows are 
the the Scottish um, <laughs> gritter trucks are, um, and so they uh, they they have an interactive map which shows where they are, and obviously they're all labelled. So you oh, <laughs> oh. control salt delete. Yeah, control salt delete, and like, <laughs> blizzard blizzard of Oz. Yeah, Lord Coldemort. <laughs> No more Mr. Ice Guy. Yeah. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> Where's Ice Clear? <sighs> <laughs> Snowy Tribbiani. <laughs> Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that <laughs> That break me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and th- th- they they all have them named on. The, they're on the side of the of the of the gritters. They're, they're labelled. Oh, uh, Freeze Weatherspoon. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Scoot, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sweet Charlie Brian. Alice Scoop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Genius. Sp- Spready Van Halen. <laughs> Optimus Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Rennie Ice Mackinsler. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Welcome to the British <laughs> public and nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> Plower to the people. Plower to the people. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, this is so ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even do it. I'm laughing too much. David Attenborough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you would enjoy those. Brilliant. Oh, because that, that that's similar to the Benedict. Cumberbatch. Yeah, those are similar to the Benedict it? Cumberbatch. It's similar. It's a similar thing, and that that makes me cry, laughing every time. Oh dear! <laughs> oh, look at this. Cup, I came. Snatch. <laughs> Bumble, I came. Bumble stuff. I, <laughs> <crimble snitch. laughs> no, listen, you have to. You have to be very careful with it because I found one which there were there were literally I think something like eight hundred variations. <laughs> And some of them were just ridiculous and really quite rude. <laughs> Look at this one. This uh, the I came, I thaw, <laughs> I conquered. <laughs> so bad. Borky so Hawk ridiculous. cutie brunch. <laughs> Don't you you'll get me started on this. I won't be able to stop laughing. <laughs> Body snatch cumberbund. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo custard bath. <laughs> Yeah, I love the ones that literally have no connection <laughs> whatsoever. It's just because you got the same first letter and that's about it. <laughs> Beanie bag cabbage patch. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, dear. But there you go. I, I, the... Bren... Brenda Dick. <laughs> Crample scrunch. <laughs> No, I can't look at it. I think I, I think this section is going to be the closest to to you getting Samwise to more than cry with laughter. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. Uh, Samwise, do not listen to that section. In, in hindsight, don't listen to that section while you're on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you might get some weird looks. <laughs> Beneficial cucumber. Yeah. Crumpet twink wrangle shrink. <laughs> I mean, it just gets ridiculous. Battlefield Counter Strike, <laughs> Butter Dish Crumble Scone. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! But there you go. I love. I love a good. I love a good nickname. I love a good nickname. <laughs> Deck chair. Boodly Doop. Floof a noodle. <laughs> <laughs> so 
ridiculous. There's one. I like the ones which are just so ridiculous. Where is it gone? Um, bourgeois catastrophe. <laughs> what? It <doesn't> sense. <laughs> what? Oh, dear. <sighs> right. Bumble, tumble, humble, crumble. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. You've got to stop now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I've got to shut this tab. I've got to shut the tab. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. That's it. No more. Right. No more. We'll do the last section. The point of <sighs> questions. Would you rather? Woo. Some of these are really good. Some of these are really oh, good. I love these. Yeah, I love these. Right. Would you oh, rather eat everything with chopsticks, including <laughs> soup and ice cream, or eat everything with your hands? <laughs> I mean... What the fringe? I know. I I think I think chopsticks because I was thinking about this. Mm. Even something like ice cream, as soon as it starts to melt, or <laughs> or soup, or you, you don't want all of that all over your hands. No. It's not hygienic. So no. I'd rather just wash the chopsticks and try and eat as much as I can. So I think for something like soup. I would definitely t- use un- untreated wooden chopsticks that you can literally scoop and then you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you could do that. Or yeah, you well, that's how, they do, that's, how they do, that's how they do the broth. They in, do. They slurp. In, yeah. Yeah. I think for the, I would agree because the biggest thing for me, can you imagine eating spaghetti bolognese with your hand? Hands. Oh, it'd be, no, it'd be horrible. As, as fiddly and as difficult as it might be with chopsticks. I think you're better off just going down the chopstick route. I, I'm not an un, I'm not uncultured goose. I can use chopsticks, <laughs> and I can use chopsticks as well. But I think yeah. you don't really want you know because anything that's under your fingernails and stuff will also yeah. be coming out as you're trying. You don't even yeah. doesn't even bear thinking. The, about, the only so, yeah. weird one would be food that you normally eat with your hands. So things like sandwiches, you'd have to eat with chopsticks. But I think I could cope <laughs> with that. Yeah, sandwiches, crisps. pizzas, crisps. Actually, peas, ch- chops. Don't eat peas with your well, hands. <laughs> I do. That's all the time. Really. But actually, I, I, I do eat crisps. crisps I I do eat crisps with. I have eaten crisps with chopsticks. Why? Things like what's it? Because <clears throat> I don't. Oh, li- be... <clears throat> I I don't like getting the cheese <laughs> dust on my hands. You don't want orange hands. No. So I you just get some chopsticks. <laughs> the way you said that almost sounded a bit. Don't you? No, How about the point? No. How about no? no exactly. That's exactly what it is. How about no? <laughs> you you've eaten what sits with tweezers, chopsticks, <laughs> chopsticks. Yeah, but what about tweezers? <laughs> tweezers aren't big enough, are they? <laughs> I don't know. You could tweezers. get a big. Well, you could get some big tweezers. Is that cheating? Big tweezers. I don't know. Would that be cheating? Well, there anyway, is a way you we, can like, wrap plastic. Yeah, we, are, we can wrap plastic bands around chopsticks to make them easier. You to can use. get training. Well, you can get yeah. training chopsticks. Rachel used to have training chopsticks. Used to put them, <laughs> yeah, them. yeah, she did. She did. It's amazing. So she had like a little <laughs> cute like, like your um, daughter there. <laughs> yeah, but she had like it was like a kawaii little bear or mm. something, and you'd shove the you shove the chopsticks in. So yes, sort of, <laughs> it makes yeah. it a lot easier. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I. I, I I've done it. I've done crisps with chopsticks because then you don't get crisp dust on your hands. <laughs> and can I just say, yes. I eat peas with my hands. All <laughs> I, was the time. Gonna, I was going to say, okay. Like, well, and you're all a man that has it with tomato ketchup, so those that's a mucky. <laughs> hey, no, I love it. So if you if you were to do that, if you so you squeeze the tomato ketchup all over it, and then you get the chopsticks and you slide them underneath mm. like that to sort of make a yeah yeah, it helps keep them together. You get a decent amount of peas. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's a great question, but it's actually got a very easy answer when you deep it. Yeah, yeah. I, I would rather sacrifice having to eat pizza and sandwiches with chopsticks than yeah, than that. Yeah, I agree. Even breakfast cereal with chopsticks would be fun. <laughs> yeah, even porridge. <laughs> yeah, porridge. Yeah, you could, you could do it. You could do it. Yeah. Um, point at question number two. Uh, ability to breathe underwater, but you turn into a lobster for 24 hours. Or talk to trees, but they all gossip behind your back. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to talk to trees. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't mind about the gossip. 
I don't know. I'm I not live sure. With the gossip. I'm not sure I could deal with the emotion. Well, I think there's two reasons why I think I'd rather be able to breathe underwater, but you turn into lobster for 24 hours. I, right. What what would a tree have to say that's interesting? Loads. There's and, trees that have been around for hundreds of years. Can well, you imagine some of the things so, those trees would have seen? Yeah, you're assuming they can remember it. Well, of course they remember it. <laughs> it goes without saying. It I've goes without saying. So, You've spoken listen, to trees before. I've spoken to so many trees. <laughs> I've known trees. Three of my closest friends are trees. But look, you turn into a lobster. Next thing you know, you're in a pot. Next thing you know, you're in a re- restaurant. Next thing you know, you're being lowered mm. into a pot of boiling water. And you go, yeah, I wish I'd spoken to trees. Then you'll be sorry. I'm not sure I could deal with the emotional damage <clears throat> from being gossiped. Oh, don't worry about it. Let, let the trees talk. <laughs> let them talk. Doesn't matter. But I, I think you'd have some fascinating conversations with some trees. Hmm. You might have convinced me. Oh, okay. Because I mean, to be fair, like, what would I use? Like, what would I use the abilities to breathe underwater for? Right, you turn and turning into a lobster as well, of all things. And, and I, I've I've written this wrong, by the way. It says abilities to breathe underwater, but you turn into a lobster for twenty four hours. That's supposed to say every time you use the power, you turn into a lobster. For oh, every time hours. you use it. So, so it's not yeah. like you turn into it once and then you're done, which I no. think would be much better because you do it once and then you're like, yeah, I can breathe underwater. But it's uh, every time you use it, you then you, you know effectively. Yeah, that's turn. so that's a complete deal breaker for me. Yeah. Uh, trees all the way. Trees all the way. Trees really all the way. Interesting. Interesting. Um, poignant question number three. Power <laughs> to control the weather. So basically like Storm from um, the X-Men. Or power to control technology. So my head says power to control technology, but my mm. heart says <laughs> power to control weather. <laughs> And I'm saying that, and it's interesting we have this poignant question at this time, where basically I haven't seen the sun <laughs> since last October. <laughs> right? Wake me up and September I'm not even ends. joking. Oh, for good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Back exactly. on the Green Day thing. Back on the Green Day theme. I, it's driving me, the weather is driving me insane. It's just every day, it's the same old shizzle. So, so my. My heart would say, oh, control the weather, because I'd love to be able to say, you know what? Can you imagine being able to say to everybody, come on over, let's have a barbecue, and you control the weather to the point, right? So you just say, I I can guarantee you sunshine. Mm. I can guarantee you sunshine and the British Grand Prix. I can guarantee... I like it when it rains in the British Grand Prix. That's a little Uh. little bit of spice. (laughs) Like the hand movement. Well, we already did Italians today, didn't salt, we? We already upset bay. them with our. <laughs> we already upset them with our, with our um, with our pasta shapes thing. Yeah, but I love the Italians, and I love Italian food. So I no, love no. Food. Yeah, well, I love food. Yeah, me too. Apart from pineapple on pizza. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, for me, oh, if I had to choose one, selfishly, I think I'd have to go for weather. You'd follow your heart. I'd follow my heart. What would you do? Do you know what? I'm really torn because I really like... I. Th- the, the weather's a really interesting one because I'd absolutely love to just be like, oh, can we just... like I'm fe-. So this week's been really weird. So on Monday, I went for a run and it with, with a work colleague and it was... F- there's no other word. It was fucking freezing. It was like <laughs> three degrees. It was raining. It was cold and it was damp. I had a hoodie... And my jacket and a woolly hat on, and I was just and I was running and I was still cold. And then on Friday it was like eleven degrees. It was still grey and miserable, but there was a lot less wind, and the the difference was just incredible. I was like, oh my god, I, I'm 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 hot. I'm actually hot, and I didn't have a hoodie. I just had my jacket on. Um. So yeah, I'd love I'd love and uh, oh, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant. But there's all these people that are like oh. Oh, autumn and spring are the best uh, best seasons. They're fuck <laughs> off. They're not. They're just not. Right? Autumn is like, everyone has this like picturesque, perfect 
like vision of autumn where you get crunchy leaves and it's all nice and dry and there's sunshine but it's nice and cool and it's like it's not it's just wet and miserable and horrible and it's autumn right end of conversation welcome to britain and spring <laughs> just doesn't it spring never really materialized it's cold it's cold it's wet it's wet it's you're wet, right we don't really summer. have a spring yeah you're right we can suddenly go into heat wave we don't really yeah. have a spring and really. i'm okay with the heat waves oh i'm not i am like uh, absolutely like there are in fact there have been times especially when it was really cold over the winter it's like i almost missed the heat wave <sighs> i just we need, we need a balance it, yeah balance. Uh, which is you that, know where the control the weather comes in yes and and it can affect your mood it can affect mm. everything yeah so I, I think in fact the more the more you're talking about this yeah i think weather yeah. i think yeah. what's ambiguous about this question is it says power to control technology and like what does that mean don't know exactly yeah like could i make it do something unexpected could i make it so your internet is not a pirate make it yeah make internet faster yeah you know make but, it completely stable but am i am i changing the technology or is that just a limitation of the technology and even if i could control it it wouldn't do anything like You're it's thinking it, it. I, i'm well i'm probably overthinking it but like everybody would default immediately or power to control technology but what does that mean whereas control the weather kind of speaks for itself so to speak it does <clears throat> And I think, I think controlling the weather would bring you more happiness. Yes, if especially if you're affected by seasonal uh, affective disorder, yeah. sads. Yeah, yeah, got the sads. So yeah, I think I would go with you. I think I'd go with the heart as well. I think I would want the ability to control the weather, and I wouldn't use it. You wouldn't nice. use it all the time. You'd let it. You'd let nature run its course. Yeah, and you then have you'd just to. Be like, yeah. you'd then you'd be like, oh, I'm fed up with this rain. Let me just have a nice sunny day. Here we go. Yeah. Or actually, yeah. let's actually have a white Christmas. Bonk. Yeah. No, see, right? How cool would that be? Mm. That would be amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, point in, would you rather, number four, speak every language fluently or play every instrument perfectly? So I thought about this. this these are such good questions. Mm. I I really couldn't decide between the two, but eventually settled on... <laughs> it's close, <laughs> but every language fluently. Every language fluently. Yeah. Because I think if I could play every instrument perfectly, that would be all well and good. But I'd still be listening to music and I'd still be, there'd still be so much music out there that other people produce and, and mm. I'd be going, oh, that's, that's amazing. Mm. You know, just being able to play the instruments. Yeah, it doesn't say it doesn't... gives you the ability to make music. It just says you yeah, have the ability exactly. to play the music. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So, so would I be creative enough to play something or create music that I, I would love or millions of people would love? No, not sure. Probably not. not. Sure. But to be able to speak every la language fluently, if you think the doors that would open up for you, that would completely change your life. Oh, it would get that rid of my traveling amazing. anxiety. It would be great. Oh, can you imagine? Like, I you hate... just go to Japan or go to Korea or wherever and yeah. just go, yeah, and just speak fluently with everybody, understand well, what... It, it, even even, even to go fear, there, isn't it? Even to go there as a tourist, like even when I go and visit, you know, people like Samwise over in Germany, it's like, I don't speak German and I really want to like not yeah. be the ignorant Englishman, but I am the ignorant idiot Englishman that doesn't <laughs> know German. And and it's interesting. Like I've had this discussion with another um, person who says, oh, I think it's okay to speak English in European countries. And I'm like, but it feels really ignorant. And he's like, yeah, but I speak Spanish, Cat Catalonian and French. So if I go to f Germany, I'm, you're expecting me to learn another language? Like, and then I go to Bulgaria to speak another language. There has to be a commonality is the way that he put it, which I thought was really good. Okay. Yeah, I kind of get it. I'm okay with that. But it's basically one of the things that I, I was like, but yeah, uh, it was like, okay, I, I will always try. You know, I've got enough French, yeah. I've got enough German to kind of be like, hello, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. I don't know this language. Please don't hate me. <laughs> right but there's also the like just being able to speak every language would just get rid of that anxiety for oh, me how amazing would that be yeah. even if just... even if i still had to speak it with a british accent yeah, it doesn't matter so long as, long as, as i could speak it speak it 
um that would just be great it does say that yeah. i wouldn't necessarily be able to read it which would be the one thing i would like as well because going around reading signs and stuff like that but that's yeah but it... even that yeah but so let's say let's say you're in japan for example you can't read it. you just ask somebody when yeah. is the next train to i don't know if you're in tokyo when is the next train to kyoto and they'll yeah. tell you and you just go yeah cool there you go nice mm. say, oh yeah just follow that go down there follow the blue side you'd understand all of that and you just yeah. go okay fine so you wouldn't actually really need to be you know, even if you're to look at a menu, you just go, sorry, what's this? And they'll go, oh, yeah, those, those well, are all your chicken options, pork it's options. It's interesting. It says you speak every language fluently, but it doesn't say you understand language fluently. <laughs> if you yeah, deep the question. You're but overthinking I think, this. I think, it's, I think it's inherent <laughs> that you understand the language the next I, thing you're about to speak it. When I made the decision on which one I'd go for, I'm, I, I assumed you'd understand it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so what? So you're going for language as well, then? Yeah, I'd go for language as well. Like, yeah. I've got no musical yeah, cool. talent, so I don't feel like there's any benefit to me being able to play every instrument. Yeah, it'd be freaking cool to be able to go to a train station and jump on the the keyboards that they sometimes have there, or the piano. Sorry, yeah. that they have there and be like, blink, blink, blink. Uh, yeah, great. Okay, you've got your five second viral visit video, but you can do the same with language. You can. Yeah. Uh, there is a guy on YouTube. There is a guy on YouTube who speaks fluent. Well, he's amazing at languages and he speaks fluent Cantonese and mm. Mandarin. And in fact, yeah. I think he's, you've seen him, haven't you? The yeah, American yeah, he go, guy. He's an yeah. American guy that goes into these Chinese restaurants and yes, that's like the one. That. And yeah. they, they speak to him in English and, yeah. you know, and then, and then he orders in like, you know, fluent um, Mandarin, well, Mandarin or whatever, whichever, yeah, whichever. he knows amazing. a few dialects and he they said their attitude towards him changes completely, which yeah. kind of shows a little bit of the nature of, the, you know the human population a bit but uh, whatever these things happen <laughs> final question then uh would you rather look like jar jar binks or sound like jar jar binks <laughs> and we both discussed that we would we had the same self-depreciating joke which was oh i'd look like jar jar binks because that would be an <laughs> upgrade <laughs> i aspire to look like him i think i think i'd rather sound like him oh interesting yeah. I don't think I'm ready <laughs> to take on either. such a different look. I mean, it would be too much. So if somebody said to me, right, as of tomorrow, you're going to start looking like Jar Jar Binks. I said, no, no, well, I can't deal with that. How would you cope with that? Whereas sounding like Jar Jar Binks. Me, sir. Right? You just get on calls and people say, so why are you, spe why are you speaking like that? What's the matter with you? And you go, <laughs> say, well, uh, you know. Something happened. I don't know. I hit my head. Now I sound like Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, I think you'd be able to carry that off. I think you'd be able to get away with that a lot easier than because if you if you if you look like Jar Jar Binks, you no one's going to say, "Oh yeah, look." I know deep down inside that's still you, Jerry. <laughs> They'll go, "What? What the actual fringe? You look like Jar Jar Binks." Do you know what? It's a really interesting. I'm I'm reading a book called Influence. Um, which is, you know, about the book, a book about persuasion. And there's loads of scientific studies that more attractive people generally are more likely to get what they want because people inherently like them more because they're more attractive. Um, I'm really torn because because the voice is your voice is so much part of you. Like we couldn't do the podcast with Jar Jar Binks's <laughs> voice. Sorry, can I? Yeah, you could. Sorry, <laughs> j just. I just want to circle back to what you were talking <laughs> about. That that <laughs> that book. Were, were you in a situation where you you weren't looking for it? You didn't really want to buy it, but somebody attractive sold it. To you. <laughs> Is that what happened? Is this no. where we're going with it? Oh, it okay. was bought as a. I want to say either birthday. Well, I say either birthday or Christmas present. My birthday is five days from Christmas, so it's one of the two. And the only person on this podcast who's got their birthday closer to Christmas is you, because yours is one day away. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. I always think ah, my birthday's closest to Christmas. You'll never, nobody's ever, I and mean, then you go and outdo me on that one. <laughs> How? Um, I think looking like Jar Jar Binks though is such a phenom phenomenon that it's too radical. Yeah, but for example, at work, just turn your webcam off. <laughs> and then when you have to go into the office. Well, and to the, and, and like the I said, family and go, well, 
I'd go and meet family and friends and, and everyone's just suppose, be like, I suppose people would be different... too creeped out. I suppose the difference here is here as well, Jerry, is you, you're married. <laughs> yeah, so, what? yeah, so I'm not sure that Rachel would be able to look at you, would she? No, but wait one <laughs> second, put, Dom. Just put a t- tape over your mouth. <laughs> it would be too much for anybody. It would be well, too exactly. much. For, no one would, yeah, no one would be able to cope with that. In fact, that, that, if you were to ch- suddenly look like Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> that would just creep everybody out totally. Back You'd never head. be able to. No, that's what. What's the way of living is that? Because the thing <laughs> is, if you sound like Jar Jar Binks, right? You could, you could even get away with not speaking. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you could. I think this is one of the trickier ones. I don't think it me. is. You could sign. <laughs> you could do sign language. <laughs> if you, if you, you really didn't want to speak, you could. You could you sign. Could sign. A podcast would be a bit rubbish. <laughs> Actually, yeah, but then you could help. You could do some great things. You could learn sign language, then you could go and join and help people in their podcast. You could see that. You could be that little person in the, <laughs> that person in the corner. In the corner, the yeah. Language. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I genuinely don't know on this one. I, I would probably... Really? I, I still would probably go look Dom. like... Really? Yeah, what? I think I will. We've agreed so easily on all of the others. On this one, you're going for look like Jar Jar yeah. Pigs. Are you actually serious? Yeah, I think so. I think so. You would do Taekwondo with those ears and that. I mean, I do Taekwondo with these ears. <laughs> no, but forget. What? When was the last time you actually took a serious look at Jar Jar Binks? You would there. you would go for looking like Jar Jar Binks. Because that would also so. be odd that you look like him but sound like Dom. I'd have a tongue the size like a like a, a massive. I've got loads of additional bits. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck with that, Dom. <laughs> good luck with that <laughs> life choice. <laughs> look, your ears go past your shoulder blades. Yeah, I think. Oh, I, I don't know. I just. I'd like. I. I'm not sure. I could. <laughs> Do the sounding like <laughs> this is me, so sir. ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's 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 not actually that much different to going to a different country, and if you stay there That's long true. enough, you pick up the accent. But at least it's still you. You don't go to a different country and then look start looking like <laughs> some alien, and then people go, oh, "Well, yeah, obviously you've been." I don't even know where he comes from. Where does he come from? Where does he go? <laughs> Here we go. A well-meaning Gungan. There you go. Gungan outcast on Naboo. <laughs> and then people say, oh my God, you look completely different. You must have spent loads of time on Naboo. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. Good luck with that. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean I'm, not, like, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm hardly... Luck is actually going to happen. <laughs> yeah, let me know yeah. how that goes. I mean, out of the other, the other ones all have Apart from the chopsticks, the other three have benefits. The other, yes. the other two are all just negatives, and you're like you're trying to choose the the, the worst one. I yeah, think what's this, the yeah? This one, it, like both of them, are horrible. Whereas the top one, it's a bit like well, actually, chopsticks wouldn't be that bad. It would be. You could live with that. You'd get proficient. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. You'd absolutely, and that'd be pretty cool. Then all of a sudden, you become like a chopstick meister. But yeah. so okay, so just just to be clear, because I my position's clear on this. <laughs> just to be one hundred percent clear on this for you, you would go for looking like Jar Jar Binks. I think I would. <laughs> oh my god, dumb. But I'm like I'm like ninety. I'm like you know sort of like sixty forty rather than like you know 90, 99, one. Okay. So I, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't really know. <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen. Yeah, I, okay. Good luck with that. Let I suppose the biggest goes. thing, the bigger thing actually is, is would you want, would you rather look, sound, or have the intelligence of? I forgot, he's not very, is he intelligent? He's I not very remember. intelligent. He's not very intelligent. Okay, so... Fine, I'll go for the intelligence bit. That means that I just go from being not Ignorance intelligent to not being not intelligent, right? So it's like a whole sideways move. You go, so, you go for you'd go for pure ignorance is bliss type mode. Yeah, 
It would be no different. People would just talk to me and they wouldn't notice any difference. They wouldn't suddenly go, oh, you've got Jar Jar Binks level of, of ignorance here. They'd just go, yeah, that's just Jerry. <laughs> they go, what did he say this time? Well, he you eats that, peas that, with his hands. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. You're, you're, <laughs> we're on this self-depreciation scale again, are we? There you go. Right? He eats peas with his hands. Oh, has he been taken over by Jar Jar Binks? No one would know. No one would know. No one would know. Uh, no. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Uh, we should probably round this off now, shouldn't we? I have no idea what I'm going to title this podcast. <laughs> Sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> I might, might title it something like that. Um, <laughs> you aren't getting away with it, Jerry. What's your ah, <laughs> do you know what? Oh, forgot. I said to oh. you, didn't I? I'm going to forget, and I forgot, and now Ooh, I'm oh, stuck. quick, now, quick. On. I'm going to do a shout out to the legend, because my mum has just received flowers, because obviously it oh, is. look at that. It is tomorrow. It is Mother's Day. Um, uh, slight panic mode now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I knew that. <clears throat> so shout out to the legend. Thank you. Yes. Happy Mother's Day for t- Happy tomorrow. Happy Mother's Day. It would have gone by the time this podcast comes out. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Absolute legend. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you're not going to wait. Your final thoughts. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> he forgets this every time. I have, literally every time. Uh, I, even, final I even panicked when I mentioned the podcast that I stole this idea from because <laughs> they also say the same and oh, I thought oh he's going to remember just... this time <laughs> well I was talking to you not that long ago and said oh I'm going to remember I'll remember <laughs> and I forgot <laughs> oh for goodness sake final thoughts uh, uh... <laughs> that's like Jar Jar Binks level of intelligence <laughs> yeah <there>. well, exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> That, that would be a step up for me. Um, <laughs> final thoughts. I <laughs> I literally don't have a single thought going through my head at the moment. So, um, okay, Let's here we go. Up the flag <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all Mother's Day, uh, to all mothers out there. Oh, I can't even speak. My brain's turned <laughs> to mush. There's no final thoughts, Dom. There are no thoughts going through my my no, skull, no empty skull at the moment. <laughs> no, I, I thank you for the pointed questions. Thank you for the... This has been brilliant. This I've really been, been looking forward to it, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, listeners. Thank you very much, watchers. Uh, <laughs> rate, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. I can't be bothered to do all the YouTube spiel. <laughs> I don't actually know. I, I wonder if there is um, some marketing research on whether that, that spiel actually works. Um, but I think it mind. does. I think it does. It, it must it, do. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe I need to start next week's podcast with please subscribe. <laughs> yeah, no, you should do because I please think, give I us think a it, five star rating on Spotify. It please preys on people's guilt. Up. Yeah, it preys on people's guilt because they kind of think, oh, I'm really enjoying this podcast. So actually, maybe I should you, do. So you in particular, this person watching this now, subscribe. Give us a five star rating. <laughs> That's it. That's oh, the one. Dear. Cool. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've no idea what I'm going to title this podcast. <laughs> We've had some great fun. Uh, we will Brilliant. catch you on the next one. We've got a guest on the next one, which I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, and we'll probably cover off some of the stuff that we've missed from this podcast. Not that you can see the notes. Uh, and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Cheers, Tom. <laughs>